what don't you understand? I found the cure for the fucking podcast of the 20th century, and now I've lost it. Very good. Good job. This is a movie about someone finding the cure for cancer and losing it. Like losing it like you lose your keys. Like the, losing the rest it of it like... Haven't you ever lost anything, Dr. Bronx? Your purse, your car keys. Keep well, going. it's rather like that. Mm -hmm. Now you have it, now you don't. I just like imagining every time. Keep going. Do another line. Just uh, read a line. Uh, I gave alka shelter to a kid with a belly just, ache. Just someone standing up, quietly exiting the theater. <laughs> alka shelter. <laughs> While they're just him. screaming at each other, people just being like, you know what? Cured him in one belt. <laughs> I got shit to do. I'm going to go. One of the wildest things anyone has ever made Sean Connery say. It was the plop, plop, fizz, fizz that really <laughs> dazzled them. <laughs> You can talk, Jamie. Okay, okay. Just, like, just join Dazzled. us. I mean... Wow, this movie made way more money than I yeah. thought. It wasn't Wait, like an really? atomic disaster. This movie did okay. It did wow. okay. Like, it was a flop, but this is a movie where you'd be like, oh, it made $20,000 and you wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> right. It wow. made money. It made $44 million. You know what I kept thinking, like, from the jump of watching this? I had a lot of thoughts. Oh, yeah, I had had more than one. But mm -hmm. the, the primary one that I kept coming back to is just like, like, first of all, a movie like this would only be like an indie now. Like no one's spending yeah, yes. money to make this story no, no. anymore and tell it in this way. The other thought was like, wow, like this was considered a drama and a romance. <laughs> and you... it's very like sticky, jokey. Yes. But because of shows now, I mean, I could name many shows, but we have so many dramedies now mm -hmm. that you're like, oh, right. Back then, anything that wasn't like, like shit dick humor <laughs> yes. was considered a drama. Yes. Whereas now it's like shows like The Bear. I mean, that's technically a comedy. So when you watch this, you're like, this is a comedy, right? And then you look and you're like, they did not think this was funny. No. You, but you are right that it has more intentional jokes in it. So many. And it than has most comedies the set up, in the Emmys. That's this, right. The, the yes. setup and energy of a comedy. Yes. It's about an odd couple. They're in, if they're fishes it's out of water. It's an oil water movie. Hundred Percent. Right, they're doing screwball bickering. Exactly, they're gonna yell at each other. The way while they she fall arrives, yes, when oh. she's just kind of like dropped off by. I mean, I don't want to say. I can't even. It's the line that she says uh, to one of the natives is. It's so horrifying. But anyways, that that whole thing of her just kind of like, like falling out of the boat and she's just like Whoa! like she just kind of what? arrives like in this messy but way you're right it's the two most fascinating things about this movie are a this is maybe the last moment in history where this is like an a picture for a major movie studio, exactly right and given that sort of like support and budget and all of that b this movie is seven genres at the same time in a way where it's like no we're trying to make epic movies for everybody like this this is their swing at making like I don't know, a classic, right? I'm okay. I know I'm jumping out of order here. Please, please. But the score, the moment where they are ziplining through the forest, mm -hmm. and it feels like to me, the closest thing to that was Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Gray on the log uh -huh. in Dirty Dancing when it's like, hey, hey. They're like that's a good scene though, which I is like a great scene, scene right. but also fun. Like that's yeah. a fun right. scene. And but two people who have chemistry. That's with right. Each other. And then right. these two, this is kind of their first moment of like getting along and having fun together. And they are ziplining through the forest, but the music under it is this like grand sweeping symphony music, and you're yeah. like, wait, we're supposed to like really take this moment seriously? Like they're they're filming that scene, like it's looking epic. at it in the edit with the energy of this is going to go into all of the Oscar clip packages of the greatest romance That's scenes. Right. That's exactly They're it. They're going to include this. And there's a real, like some of, not even the worst movies we've ever covered on the podcast, but some of the least essential or most forgotten movies we've covered on the podcast. There's a very telling line you will find on their Wikipedia, which is just like the Wikipedia entry is really dry, pretty empty. And then there's one line which is like, although the score is quite well liked. Oh and it's like, gosh. this is a movie that's legacy is 90%, I don't know, ending, like, people had the CD and played it in their car. Maybe. Maybe. It's 
it's probably a score that sounds better out of context. That's what I'm out saying. Out of context, you're like, oh, I yeah, think this that's is like right. sweeping or, yeah, Jerry Goldsmith. It's fine. You can imagine someone in the edit being like, we need temp music. And they're like, you know what's good? Jerry Goldsmith's Medicine Man score. There's always that thing, too, like movies where, like, white people go to a foreign land yeah, where the, 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 the score reflects that in yeah. such a dorky way. A world where of it's just wonder. like, it's like, bloop, 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 bloop. Like, it's <laughs> yes. always like this, like, xylophone experimental. And yeah. you're like, you don't do that for any other kind of movie. This, it's just yes. this. No, it has the score of you've traveled to the quote unquote exotic part of Disneyland. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You're Welcome on the to Jungle the Cruise Kingdom. Now. Yes, right. yes. A hundred percent. It's like you're there. Oh my God. It's so true. This movie's fascinating, but also it's like, I, 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 I don't even know if you can call it a twist. I mean, the earlier twist in the movie is that she's actually not from Brooklyn. She's from the Bronx, a right? Huge, I mean, I had Which to turn the TV off and take a walk around like the block. Like it's, it's right. the fucking atomic bomb. <laughs> the movie, like, rattles in the wake <laughs> of that reveal. But the other twist is that he's, like, not a white savior because he's basically... He's he's the Oppenheimer of the jungle, and he's sure. like trying to remake himself as a savior because he can't get over the devastation he caused. Do you think they were like making this movie and they were like, "Call Gap"? There's going to be on a run on khakis yes. after this comes out. Yeah. Like we're gonna. Oh my god! There's going to be uh, ponytails are going to be back. We need to set up a ponytail spread at Vogue. Like yes. they, like that's what they were thinking when this movie come out. This movie came out in February. I think that I think they had given up on it. Maybe actually. Just to circle back to the mm-hmm. to Sean Connery's Please. look. I mean, mm-hmm. there is like an identity crisis happening where he is a male lead. I would say most people found him handsome. I mean, he's yeah. A, yeah, a handsome male lead. But then they kind of like frump him up, yes. which feels more modern. Like uh-huh. not every male lead looks the same now, right? Like, or at least they're not sort of looking classically handsome all the time. Yeah, yes. There's like, or if they are, there's like some kind of metamorphosis that gets them there. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it was like, that to me was even just odd. Like the way they made him look kind of just like a dorky dad who's been in the jungle a long time. Yes. It, it's <laughs> it's like he's the lead. Like, I don't know. It felt so unnecessary. It's so fascinating because Connery basically stayed some sort of sex symbol throughout his entire career. Like, I feel like he's often cited as an example. He is. When actresses complain about, like, the second you turn 35, you're, like, put into a mom bucket, and Sean Connery still gets to play sexy right. in his 70s. That's right. Like, he's such a good yes. example of, they don't try to make him look younger. They're not pretending not, he's younger. That's what I was trying to say. Not he's at all. 61 in this movie. And he basically yeah. retires 10 years later. Right. Like, Entrapment so, is yeah. basically, like, this 10 years later. Which is a sexier movie than this. Definitely. Like, Definitely. Entrapment is yes. seven years after this, and his co-star is 15 years younger. Wow. Right. Well, and, and his co-star is, like, a sex bomb in that movie. She's Definitely. in the Lycra, and she's dodging the, the dance lasers. The lasers. This one, at least, Lorraine Bracco's like, ah, jeez, can I get a shower? I yeah. can't do her. But, but seven years later, they're close. doing, I think, kind of nailed <laughs> that it. That was actually dead on. Do you know that she plays a, um, what is, is she a seagull? Okay, a Bra- seagull. One of the worst movies we've ever covered on this podcast is, a movie you might not even be aware happened, Robert Zemeckis's live action Pinocchio remake that went straight to Disney oh, that's Plus. That's right, she's a seagull. In, in it. which Lorraine Bracco, it's the only other Lorraine Bracco performance we've covered on this podcast. Lorraine Bracco plays a character they added just for the Pinocchio remake who's not in the Disney movie, who's like a gossipy seagull. And it's Lorraine Bracco with this accent, but basically sounding like she chain smoked 15 packs of cigarette right before every line reading. She's like, I, I saw you some Pinocchio. He's there in the water. Some whale was trying to eat him. And Tom Hanks' Geppetto is like, my boy, the Pinocchio. She's like, yeah, you should go find him. <laughs> she probably does. I mean, she's got a distinct voice. She, she does. I has. love her voice. I do, too. Maybe she's been smoking well all these years uh, to just kind of keep it where it's got to be, right? Sure. Kind of, kind of keep the Marge Simpson in it. She's she's definitely she's getting margier as time goes on. Right. I think. She was pretty margy even as a young. Oh yeah. Uh, she's just getting yeah. The the marginess just keeps going and going and growing and growing. Yes. Yeah, no, she's she's uh maybe she's gunning for the throne when Kavner steps down. Also, just to circle she's back too though. I mean yeah, that's true. She's almost seventy. Oh uh, she? Lorraine, I mean she's been around. Oh, yeah. The Sopranos is twenty five years old almost. Yeah. Um I don't know why I'm like I kind of fixated on this idea of like the 
the sort of like the two leads. Like, it's very interesting. Again, it feels like you can really feel that we're moving from 1999, 90s into the 2000s. Yeah. Also in that she's, you know, I feel like if this movie were made even just five years before, it would have just been sexier, steamier. Yes. Like, this is not a sexy movie. It, it's almost aggressively unsexy, and it doesn't feel like it's trying and failing. It's it's it almost doubling like the, down on, like, a real, like, dorky, unappealing, like, they're really yes. <laughs> trying to be, like, the worst versions of themselves. Like, they're not trying. I know they're working together, and that part I really, I like that they are like, no, these are colleagues. Like, that to me feels modern but then you're so used your brain is so trained for the movies that came before it to be like okay but when does it get hot and it's kind of like never not only does it not get hot but (laughs) like 30 minutes into it you start going i hope it doesn't get hot. right that's the thing they almost are like don't think that's what you're signing up for because we are not delivering you're like this type of movie has trained me to think it's going to get hot yes the way this movie is actually progressing i don't want to see that happen i hope they never i hope hope nothing i hope nothing ever happens between the two of them pointedly a movie that cuts away from the one kiss at the end you do wonder if there was a focus group yeah. That that said Nuts like oh all like, the way down. Right. Yeah. They were like, oh, we are not ready for these two to like do No, because they, they lean in towards each other, it goes in a slow motion, it cuts away when they're an inch away from each other's mouths. It feels like you say like a real knob swing moment, which yep. means to be clear, just people saying no no, thank you. Like please do not show us that. Right. The opposite the of what screening. people of what the studio wanted, which was audience members swinging their knobs around <laughs> in excitement. That's what you wanted to clarify, right? <sighs> Introduce our show, please. This is Blank Check with Griffin and David. I'm Griffin. I'm David. It's a, a podcast about filmographies, directors who have massive success early on in their careers and are given a series of blank checks to make whatever crazy passion projects they want. Sometimes those checks clear and sometimes they bounce through the Amazon baby. This is a mini series on the films of John McTiernan. It's called... You can do it. Pod Hard with Avenge Cast. That's right. Okay. Um, and... Today, return to the show, a long overdue second time guest. There was a Reddit thread of people who've only been on once that they should have on again. And it, it, we, we just kind of realized recently, A, this was not a movie a lot of people were clamoring for. <laughs> B, saw this guest was back in New York City. And I was like, right, we should reach out again. Jamie Lee, incredible comedian from Crashing, writer on Ted Lasso. Hey guys. Do you have Emmys now? Do you have physical Emmys? I do. That's How many wild. you got? I have two so far. I say so Hell far because yeah. they're coming up sure. again in January. We'll, well see. Yeah, you're going to manifest. We'll I mean, come we'll on. See. I'll yeah. say this. A thing I noticed, you got quality screen time at every award show where Ted Lasso won. Yes. You were just always oh, right there. Your, IM, your IMDb picture is you holding an Emmy. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It never felt like you were doing the like Alyssa Milano trying to get into the frame thing, but I was like always right there. Oh, it's so funny you say that because when I was so the first Emmys, um, I was seated in the back, very, mm-hmm. very back. There were two tables, one that was right by the stage and then one that was in the far, far back. You would never see it. Mm-hmm. And I was in the back table. And then at the last minute, there was this thing that happened where someone on our staff who did not get a ticket initially, we finally were able to get them a ticket. Okay, uh, Jason, I don't think, had a plus one. Mm-hmm. And so they sat next to Jason and they were like, I don't want to sit there like that. I can't sit there. That's wow. too much pressure. Okay. And they came up to me completely unsolicited. Yeah. And they were like, will you sit there? And I was like, mm, yeah, I'll fucking sit there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? And so I ended up sitting there and I was like, That's my memory of you insane. being right next to him. I was right yeah. next to him. It was insane. And that swap basically happened right before the award. I yeah. want to say three minutes before we were rolling. Insane. Yeah. Um, okay, so you, all right. So how so are the wild. Are they fun? Um, they are. I mean, I think, you know, I think it's a lot of work for anyone going, but like, especially for women, it's, you know, it's a full day of... You got to put all your yeah, shit on. Yeah, and I'm not even like, you know, you see these like, whatever, you know, get ready with me with like Reese Witherspoon getting ready for the Oscars. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not doing that, but like... Even just having your makeup done, it takes a really long time. And then, like, getting into uncomfortable evening wear and you – it starts at, like, four. And then it goes until 
you know, with an after party till like 1 a.m. I sound like such a like boring ass pee? person. Like how annoying That's what is I'm it saying. There's pee? just like a lot. It's just like exhaust, truly yes. the most exhausting thing I've ever gone through. Like I dread just like feeling tired by it. <laughs> Which, you get to go home with that hard one. I know, What I know. do they get call it? the Emmy trophy? Is there a name for her? Like just an, I think just an Emmy. Yeah, an Emily. An Emily. You know, you get to see Emily. Yeah. yeah. But no, I mean, no, it's a, it's a huge... Getting dressed is the worst. It is. I and hate I, getting dressed. Yeah. yeah. David loves being naked. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say... Like, <laughs> sure, but I also just mean like... <laughs> David's like a toddler throwing a fit every time his wife buttons. tries to yeah. pull a shirt over his head. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, um, I think also post-pandemic, like, I don't know if you guys feel this way, and I know we're getting really off topic here. Because, quite all right. But, but... I yeah, I think it takes like more effort to oh, like absolutely. get dressed up. Like yes. I enjoy it because it represents like, oh, we're back out there again. We're seeing people. We're doing things. We're not home all the time. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, we spent like two years in sweatpants. Putting so. shoes on is an emotional process for me now. It is just the, lacing up sneakers oh my God, takes the bed like over. some deep breaths. Oh God, yeah. Yeah, duh, and I gotta yeah. tie it again. You have to find yeah. something to put your foot up on. Loop, loop. This is I know. done. <laughs> oh my God, another two loop. Ears? I could do two, two of these. I do. Have I said Four this on the them? podcast? We count the other. We haven't shoe? streamlined this. I yet? do what? bunny ears. Yeah. To this day, oh, which okay. is embarrassing. I think. You know, bunny ears, Ben. No. Well, you know how it's like to tie your shoes isn't what's it like loop swoop pull or whatever, sure. whatever you're taught. Mm-hmm. I was bad at that when I was like, you know, four. I was so bad at it. I didn't understand like, it. I was like, this you're doesn't work. So then someone taught me. me bunny ears mm-hmm. where you make like kind of two loops and tie them together. Yeah. And I just, that's how I tie my shoes forever. Mm. I never like, Does no one ever later was, it works fine. Hardy knot? It holds? <laughs> yeah, it holds. Interesting. I do that too. Okay, so we're okay. But you double knot, right? I double knot. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Single knot? Four no, single, single oh, I do, knot. Oh, I do. I do You're I single do knot? Yeah. What? Do you tie your shoes like 40 times a day? They sometimes come <laughs> untied. Yeah. Ben likes to live on the edge. Ben's a daredevil. Wow, that is a risk taker. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jamie, the point you're making yeah. about this feeling like a movie caught in an interesting transitional point between eras of filmmaking, just to put this in context, John McTiernan, the guy who we're covering right now on the podcast, his first movie no one sees. What is it? It's called Nomads. It's with Pierce Brosnan doing a very bad French accent, okay. being chased by some punks in a van. <laughs> okay. It basically is just a demo reel that gets his foot in the door, although okay. I think he probably intended for it to be more. Uh, but it's it's well-crafted enough that studios are like, I guess we can hand this guy money. He knows where to put the camera. We found it pretty boring. His next three movies after that are Predator, Die Hard, and The Hunt for Red October. So he makes three fucking humongous movie star movies that are like kind of culture defining and start to provide a template for what the 90s are going to be. Right. Right. Like those three movies are 87, 88, 90, I think. Yeah. And become like, oh, this is what studios want to make. I never saw Hunt for Red October and I'm, I'm sure you guys already covered that. We, we, we did you we, cover? We will have covered the episode. It. Will you will have come out. We haven't yeah. recorded the episode. Yet. What is that about? Just quickly, the Hunt for Red October. It's, just to give me some context. It's, uh, I've it's seen the, the other first ones. Tom Clancy movie. Okay, and it's Sean Connery as a Russian submarine captain, correct? And Alec Baldwin as Jack Ryan, CIA analyst. It's basically Jack Ryan figures out. Have you ever seen? I bet you haven't. I've seen Hunt for Red October. <gasps> what the fuck are you talking about? I thought you might not have seen. You don't like Wrong. war movies. Wrong. I like I like fucking I like submarines. I guess yeah, submarines yeah. are cool. Submarines um, are cool. Yeah. yeah, it's like this this Russian guy uh, captain decides to defect, mm-hmm. and he's in charge of a very powerful submarine called right. Red October. But it's like a movie that gets thought of as an action movie that's really a negotiation movie. Is that fair to say? Uh, yes, which is I also mean, why I like. There's it. not, it's not a lot of like really gunplay in it. It's it's big charactery kind of yeah stuff. And it's like these two guys sort of circling each other, trying to figure out their motivations until the last act. They're finally on the submarine together. Okay. Okay. Um, but but is I mean a huge big movies. It's yeah, big. A film that is intended to be a franchise starter, which it does end up being in a weird, circuitous way. It's right. based off the biggest book at that time. It stars one guy in his like attempt to ascend to the A list, and then this legendary movie star. And they'll keep making Jack Ryan movies for the next 15 years right. off of that. Yeah. So like three movies that are like, this is what studios want. This right. is the model. He did now. it. He did it. He did it. And he, in the very little information that is out there uh, 
on this film's Wikipedia page, there's the one quote that is from a movie line piece that he did in 2001 before he went to jail. We will circle back to this. Okay. <laughs> he did go to jail. <laughs> An interview true. John McTiernan did titled The Extreme Sport of Being John McTiernan. This must have been to promote rollerball. And his line about Medicine Man was, uh, it was a little art movie with Sean Connery that only cost $27 million. If the press hadn't defined it as an action movie, it probably wouldn't have been considered a disappointment. Now, I find it fascinating that he thinks of this as a little art movie. I understand if he said it was like a character piece, an adult character piece I did with Sean Connery and it was perceived as an action movie and that's why people disliked it. That holds a little water of like, I was trying to do something outside of my box. Yeah, It was sold as a blockbuster. It wasn't. To call it a little art movie when it stars one of the biggest stars in history... It's like made by a major studio, put out by a major studio. He says it cost $27 million. Many sources say it cost 40. Which Interesting. if it was 40, that's more than any of his films had cost up until this point. Wow. If it's 40, that's more than the budget of Red October Predator Die Hard. Wow. And even if it's 27, it's basically in the ballpark of what those movies cost. Yeah, I think he's knocking the price down. No question. Yeah, For he's sure. like rounding down just two. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little art movie. It's what not. A, that's but like, insane. But even. I mean, as, calling as, it an art movie is insane. Insane. In comparison it, to his prior three it movies, is. it's more of but an art movie in that it's to, about relationships and, yeah, man's relationship to nature. Like, I guess His I'm career scratching. had roided up so much so fast that he's like, oh, this is my like little art project. Yes. And it's like, no, this is you trying to make like a big, sweeping, old Hollywood, like adventure, romance, comedy. Right. Epic. Um, Yeah, you can tell that the goal was like epic. Yes. He wants to make African Queen. He wants to make English Patient. He wants to make, you know. Anytime someone is like in the jungle, Mm -hmm. going through the brush, you know, just being like, oh, 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 like whatever, poked with branches, whatever. And then they come to that point. Where they are like, <gasps> they and it's just or... the water or uh-huh. the mountains, and you get that huge, you know, panoramic of like, oh, the baby, we're swells. in paradise. Yes. You're like, that's Avatar. Like that's, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? That's how little. Uh-huh. That's how little art film Avatar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> but that, you're right. Like that is something that in and of itself is like you associate that moment with like huge Hollywood grandeur. Absolutely. Oh, they could fly there and send a whole crew there yep. and photograph the majesty. That's not art film. And it's not like he's like, oh, I'm like Werner Herzog and I just went there with five people and we were there for two years right. and I lost my mind in the jungle, but we were bootstrapping it. Right. Also, so many, I guess, extras or what would we... Yeah. Uh, they yeah. also had line. I mean, Local a lot of actors, them, yeah. maybe, depending yeah. on where they shot That's this. That's true. I guess it was we definitely can on up. a set, most of it, right? Like the Well, you know what? I've got a dossier here. Okay. I, here's the thing. This is, as Griffin's saying, one of those movies where the Wikipedia entry is like, they shot it in March and finished in July. Okay. Right. Like, there's came no out in information. No one liked this it. This is not a movie that anyone cares enough to have learned about and then no. sat down and been like, let me write a paragraph on Wikipedia. later in his career, he makes flops that are so big that people study them. Oh, really? Whereas this is just kind of like, I don't, what is that? He made a movie called Medicine Man? Yeah. It, um, when you told me that was the movie we were going to be talking about, I was like, I know that movie. I, like, knew it. I, you know, I like, could picture... Video store box movie. Yes, yes. I could picture uh, it. I could vaguely remember it coming out. I posted about it, and a lot of people said that it was, like, a school movie. That their, hmm. like, biology teacher or whatever, like, wow. some science teacher would be like, we're going to watch fucking Medicine Man. Oh. This movie is, quote-unquote, educational. Wow, like, I mean, well, there's absolutely no, no. sexual chemistry, tension, That's the, it's sexuality. Kind of, it is low on... So I guess it's very right, it's safe low to show on school content. children. Right. Absolutely. Like, there's not really much going on, and they do talk about, like, molecules or whatever. I, I yeah, understand. They do. <laughs> Look, I understand that they want them to have this sort of push and pull bickering chemistry. Yeah. But their, like, <laughs> anti-chemistry in this movie is so severe, where I was like, what would I relate this to the way they're reacting to each other on screen? And the closest analog I could come up to was someone filming a Karen yelling at an employee at a store and the employee just doesn't want to be on camera. That is so, God, that is so dead on. Right? That it's is... like the energy of like, she's just yelling at him and he's just like, I'm just, I'm, tr- I'm trying to do my job here. 
I mean, it's, lady, I'm not looking to get into a fight. The dynamic too, it it it's interesting because it, you know it's the classic thing of like they start, you know, at the top they hate each other, but by the end, and it's like at the top they don't hate each other. No. They are like fighting like they've been married for sixty years, yes. but they the do, but ones. not in the cute way, not no, in the like, no. but they they would never leave each other. Like they've debated divorcing yes. throughout their entire marriage, right? And that's where they meet. They're Is like this, too lazy right. to divorce. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're lost angry. in their work. Right. Yeah. And by the way, of course, there's a couple of mentions of like I didn't know they were sending a woman. You know, there's there was that. There was like two or three of those. Yeah. So I can understand that being like fuel for her to be annoyed but i didn't even feel like she heard that no she's just pissed her default is pissed angry person pissed yeah and I, it's not because of the sexism she's a good act i agree with she's you. given good performances yes if you showed me this and i'd never seen anything else by her and said what do you think i would say i don't think she's good <laughs> she's I in a different movie than yes. he is Yes, it does feel like whatever she drilled down to on day one of like, here's how I'm going to approach this role. That's, yep. Someone should have been like, hey, hey, yeah. this is all wrong. You really cannot do yes. this. Like, I, this isn't a minor yes. note. This is a let's knock the tower down and start from scratch. Th this is a, hey, the design of the Predator isn't working. We need to <laughs> right, shut down right, production right, right, for a week. Right. Even That's if it exactly takes a right. Week, right. You cannot just be at this energy no. from minute one. And if this is what she's doing on day Day one, you shut down production for a week. You go into like table work, trying to find the right energy. And if it doesn't work, you recast. Griffin, I think that they did shoot an order because it feels like a conversation was had. Yes. Oh, like maybe it mellows a it little mellows bit. It mellows and it's not. And what I was saying before. The first 20 minutes is the most intense. It doesn't get anywhere it's true. good. No. <laughs> right. But it, there, it, there's the, the severe, opening, you're like. It opens with severity. And you're like, how much of this do I got to watch? And it's everything is like, oh, Oh, she's like so flabbergasted and just yeah. like it. It is a, it's an insane energy, and he's not matching it. And I know he's been there longer. She's the one coming in. She's been on a long journey. Like I know all the things. Also, it still didn't justify that level. Also, like movie star wise, right? He's in like decade five. He's, of his gonna, movie star he's giving you this. He's giving you this. <laughs> You're not gonna take Connery aside and be like, "Hey, buddy, like this That's is exactly a weird take right. from you." It's like, no, this is shock. This Everyone is knows what, you what asked he's doing. For. His right. default movie star energy is a little brash, right? Yeah. He's already like a guy who leads with like, there's something a little animalistic and scary about yeah, he's him. He's going to be right. sort of big, broad guy. He's going to be a tough nut to crack. He's right. not going to let anyone in. So you want to cast shit. someone to counter his energy, not yeah. someone who's going to be angrier than he That's is. That's exactly yes. It's 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 a fighting fire with fire. Totally. But like it, for her, it's like shooting bullets at a train. Like he's Sean Connery. This is You're my like, other hey, point. Fuck you, man. He's just like I don't care no, about. He is like, a bulletproof vest. He does not no. care what you say to him. He's it will so ricochet right off of him. And his movie star energy too. That it's just like. That's it true. rolls off of him. You feel no effort. He is undeniably captivating, even when he's miscast in a movie. He's You're unbelievable. Like, he's a movie star. Can't he is question this. Fully a movie for star. A and you really see it when she's like flailing off yes. the rails in her performance at the beginning. I do yep. think it softens and and becomes more grounded with him. Yes. But in those first few scenes, you're just like, whoa, like he is he is holding court here acting wise. Yes. It's just wild. Like this is presumably, I mean, this is two years after Goodfellas, which is her like big American breakthrough. Yeah. She gets an Oscar nomination. This is one of those classic, let's try out to see if they're a movie star things, right? Here's someone yeah. give a great supporting performance in a serious movie. Yep. Let's put them above the title, put them as the second face on the poster, see if they work as a lead. And it feels like everyone bats this down. Her career is kind of fucked until The Sopranos after this. Mm. Um, but there's... I mean, you're right. I mean, right. Yeah. I mean she like... does even Cowgirls Get the Blues, mm -hmm. which is also a bomb. Mm. And, and then after that... The same year she does she... Radio Flyer, which is weirdly similar to this movie in, like, big director... High price script acquisition, hot script in Hollywood gets the big part and it comes out and everyone's like, "What the fuck is?" This? She's she's also she's like the lead of that movie, but it's a kid movie. Right, Radio it's Flyer was like low key, like quite sad. Yes, no? yeah. It's, Radio uh, Flyer was baby like Elijah Wood. the hottest spec script that everyone was losing their fucking minds over, and everyone's fighting to get it. And all this top talent comes together and it comes out in theaters, and people are like, "This is really dark and depressing." Why did people think this was commercial? It's also not good. 
She's also in that. Uh, I, think erotic... I remember crying it's, when I it's saw it like as a, a kid. It's like the magic of being a child, Land of Imagination movie, where the whole thing is based on they imagine that their radio flyer wagon is going to fly them away to space, but it turns out the whole movie is them like trying to process abuse. Yes, right. that's right. That's the twist is like. The radio flyer is just a wagon, right? Yeah, yes. that's the wagon. But like, why does. Why is there a wagon called radio? I like I in the when I'm at the playground, I still see radio oh, flyers, no, and I'm like asking questions of the movie. You're asking no. questions of the radio. Like, what is? Flyer why is it called a radio flyer? No, what fucking idea? Wasn't okay, there fine. like animal abuse in it? I might be conflating it with the Cure. Do you remember that movie? Yes. Um, For some reason, the, in my head, they're kind of similar. The Cure, I think maybe all. I think both movies have Joe Mazzello in them, and but, they have. Uh, yeah. they, it's just like children trying the to. The Cure like, is about AIDS. It is about right. AIDS, and the, right, that's also Renfro. Some, there, yeah, there's yeah. Renfro. There was just, I remember this sort of like the two of them playing together. It's like they can shut out reality. Yes. Kind of thing. Because reality right. is like so harsh. It was a thing anyway. Hollywood was really into. But for those to be her what two a, 92 oh. movies, and Radio Flyers obviously sold less on her, even though you're right, she is like ostensibly the top build lead actor in it, certainly the lead adult. Right. And she's not on the poster or anything. Right. She kind of gets taken down. By these two, she, in a way where well, I'm just like... There's a third movie she's getting taken down by. What's the third one? A film called Traces of Red. Have you heard of it? No. Well, do you like erotic thrillers from the early 90s? Like, yes. you know, Basic yeah. Instinct yeah. or, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know... In, like, a nostalgic way, Okay, yes. well, like, how do you feel about, like, an erotic thriller starring Jim Belushi? <laughs> like, what's, <laughs> what's your... Level of interest <laughs> in Wait, an erotic she thriller. The le- She's like the, the female. It's Rocco and Belushi. That's too much. And I'm gonna find you the poster, and you're I mean, gonna love it. Too much slash not enough. Yeah. Uh, which like Jim Belushi? The there were, there were traces of red in that studio's quarterly earnings when that fucking movie <laughs> came out. More than traces. Yes. Yeah. Look at this poster. Stop. This is the most. Wait, I need Jeez, to get it's him Hold like on. fucking attacking her neck like Dracula. Yeah, like this is maybe the least appealing poster I've ever seen in my Ew. entire life. Yeah. Like, if I'm at in like a multiplex, I'm like, I'm going to actually write, physically write down that I don't want to see traces of red. I'm going to take out my pocketbook. Anyway, <laughs> uh, just, just make sure that I don't even make a mistake. <laughs> She got a Razzie nod. For for this? For for Traces of Red and this. A split. Like a yeah, sort of I mean, like a, a, you had a bad year. This nod. is a catastrophic, like, Goodfellas, okay, here's a good actor. Yeah. Three movies knocks her right back down to, like, the fucking minors. And then, yeah, it's like Sopranos is kind of boasting the fact that they've gotten her, where it's like, we got an Academy Award nominee to do a television show. That's right. Because, like, just to finish it up, it's like, yeah, after the Cowgirls Get the Blues, it's basically, like, Basketball Diaries and Riding in Cars with Boys and stuff, where it's like, she's a mom now. Like, you yeah. know, she doesn't even get to have any fun. And when Sopranos comes to her, they're like, you'll play the mob wife. You're, we're going to just right. give you the Goodfellas role. You're yeah. going to play Carmela. And she's like, I don't want to do that. I already did that. Can I play the psychiatrist? And they're yeah. like, okay. You know, like, like because again, they want it, right. You know, the prestige of her mattered still on television. On television, not having the Academy Award nomination yes. within a decade still mattered. Right. And the first season is sold so hard on the therapy. Yeah. Which is obviously a bigger part of the first season than it is the later ones. But like, the first season, it's like, look, we got Lorraine Bracco on TV. We know you hated her last five movies. <laughs> She's, <laughs> She's back. Also, do you like The Sopranos? I so I am one of those people who has not like fully seen it. It's fine. I've seen like two or three episodes. Um, so, so you don't know good Lorraine Bracco. I mean, of, like, I've, I've seen her. I I think of her in The Sopranos in the episodes that I've seen. She's incredibly good on this. Yeah, she's, yeah. She's so I know she can be good. Can. So I think this is probably just a case of. Bad match. Bad casting, and also, bad like, this script is oh, yeah, dog the directing. Shit. Maybe yeah. they told her to ham it up. I mean, it's kind of a hammy movie in a weird well, and way. Also, so there's but, nowhere like, else to get any fucking energy from in this movie because it's just people sitting in a tent being like, now exactly where I put that right. fucking cure for cancer? But you also, know, like, it's if they it, like, want hammy, then she's the wrong choice. I, like, yeah. I, I does feel, I am so curious who else went out for this. I need, or, or well, let, they were okay. talking. Let me see what's in here. Okay, okay. Red October, huge hit. 
let's make a sequel right away. They want to make Patriot Games, which does end up being the next Jack Ryan movie. Right. John McTurnan has always said, I never wanted to make that movie because the IRA are the villains in it. Mm-hmm. And hey, maybe I'm not pro IRA, maybe, but like I'm Irish American. I don't want to make some movie with like these like Irish Republican villains. It's slightly more politically conscious yeah. filmmaker than a lot of the other action guys of this era. Uh, he doesn't want to wantonly villainize. He right. claims also that's why Alec Baldwin didn't do it, but like with Alec Baldwin, you kind of never know what the real reason for right. or him b- losing a movie When Baldwin is. gets Hunt for Red October, it's like, this is your bond. You're going to play this guy forever. And then he is dropped in favor of Harrison Ford for the sequels. Mm. And there are a thousand conflicting stories about what happened there. Sometimes he says it was his choice to drop out. So, you know, Sometimes he, he says money, that maybe. Paramount pushed him out, whatever it is. But either way, it's like, there's no direct sequel to that movie. McTiernan doesn't come back. Baldwin doesn't come back. And the other part of it is, when Sean Connery gets cast as the villain in Hunt for Red October, it's like, well, now this is a Sean Connery movie. Now um, Baldwin has been overshadowed in what was supposed to be his franchise. His okay, big movie. okay. But so the whole thing kind of, yeah, turns into something else. So he, but he wants to make a movie with Connery. They try to make this movie called Road Show, which is an adaptation of a novel that people have been trying to make for like 20 years. Okay. Like Martin Ritt tried to make it with Jack Nicholson or whatever. But the big takeaway is like Connery wants to team up with McTiernan again. So then he gets attached to a Robin Hood movie, but then Costner's Robin Hood movie gets like you know, outtakes it. It starts. So hadn't Connery already done Robin and Marion? Uh, sure, but also Connery is yes. in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Look, you know, who cares? How many but that times wasn't this gonna guy got to tell Robin Hood? I think that, oh, that was not with Connery. Okay, it makes sense for McTiernan to want to do a Robin right. Hood. Just not with Connery. Um, so, all right, aside from, uh, putting that aside, mm-hmm. uh, Karolko Pictures, um, f- maybe is sort of falling apart at this point, but the guy who created that, uh, Andrew Vanya, yeah. he pays Tom Shulman, who had just won an Oscar for writing Dead Poets Society. A career we're going to have to talk about in a second. Uh, three, some, somewhere between two and a half and three million dollars in 1989. For this For this movie. Script. It's called The Stand, uh, the script, the original script. Mm, bad uh, title. That's the name of, of course, a well-known Stephen King novel, so they mm-hmm. changed the name. But yes, it's about a doctor finding a cure for cancer in the Amazonian rainforest. They hire John McTiernan. They pay him $6 million. It's a lot of money so in 1989. Money. It's money being thrown It's a lot of money now. Thing. It's more than they also, a week. They pay Tom Stoppard a million dollars to do rewrites. The, I, I, so Connery gets 10. Yeah, see, the, and the, Stoppard indeed gets a million dollars to rewrite the script. You're trying to convince me this they movie cost 27 a yeah, all I in? Mean, this is why the movie actually cost 40. more like 40. Right. Of course. Right. They, 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 but maybe Tier McTurn is like, look, it costs 27 when you take all the bullshit salaries out. <laughs> maybe that's what he means. Yeah, well, guess what, dude? Your salary is a big part of that. But like, it's also just the idea so that wild. you're going to spend yeah. a fortune on a script, like, and just like, and then be like, hey, let's get it. Tom Stopper to fix up this piece of shit script. It's like, why'd you buy yeah, it? What the fuck are you doing? I just can't even imagine reading like an earlier iteration of this. And then being like, oh, there is I something here. It. We got to Yeah, yeah. I yes. mean, it, unless it's like it just sort of leaps off the page. I, I, it doesn't feel like the kind of movie that would leap off the page. It does not. And certainly not as a film of this size. That's like, exactly right. I could see a version of this where you're like, this is a good adult drama. Yeah. Let's make this for $10 million. Yes. Not like this is fucking money in the bank. But Radio Flyer was the same thing where you're like, who reads this abuse script? Right. Like about children disassociating and goes like, I think this needs to be on every screen in America. Um, Their taste back then was. Yeah. And they wanted people to feel bad. They did. Feeling so, bad but, was like kind of synonymous with feeling cool but or feeling something. Feeling bad in a very glossy way. Yeah, like, yes. like, can we, but it's like, can we take. American independent cinema is happening all of a sudden. Right. These dark, dramatic movies that deal with intense subjects. So can we make a glossy version? By the way, uh-huh. in the 40s oh, that and makes 50s, sense. there were like shiny Hollywood issue films with giant movie stars yeah. that touched difficult subjects and did it in a way that was not uplifting, but had a sort of sweep and romantic grandeur to them. Mm. I just want to Tom Shulman sidebar for a second. Tom the, Shulman. The guy works in TV, yeah. right? 
Mm-hmm. Then he writes Dead Poet Society, which is based on his own life experience in a boarding school. Mm-hmm. It is a weird one, though, where you watch that movie and you're like, well, this is based on like a book or something, right? It's like, no, this was an original screenplay. Wow. No, just, I like, always thought it was based on a book yeah. and until like a just fucking now. rocket. It's about one of his teachers. Yeah. Sells for a ton of money. He wins the Oscar. Here's his career after that. It's really Okay. Tough. The same year as Dead Poet Society, which is his like first produced feature screenplay. He gets a credit on Honey, I Shrunk the Kids because he wrote the original version before it was rewritten to be a comedy. This is when it was going to be a serious action thriller called Teeny Weenies. (laughs) This is true. Let's move on. Let's move on. We can't spend too much time. You're right. Then he did Second Sight, which is a Bronson Pinchot, John Larroquette science fiction buddy cop comedy where Bronson Pinchot, it's a paranormal detective and a psychic. Okay. Okay. Then, so those those are his 89 films. But now let's look at, like, what does he do after he's won the Oscar? After he's had Dead Poet Society? Right. What about Bob? That's a good credit. It's him doing a broad comedy, but with darkness, good people, whatever, yep. right? Yeah, people like that movie, right? Yeah. Like, you know, yes. th- that feels like a Ben movie. What about Bob? Is that a Ben movie? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, Don't hassle like me on local. On cable a lot movie. Yeah, yeah. well, because uh, um, Dreischer... Reminds uh, Dreyfus. me, Dreyfus. Sorry, yeah. uh, reminds me a lot of my father. So I love to watch a movie, seeing my dad be flustered by someone who's fun. This is Ben's favorite <laughs> subgenre. It's like Clifford. What about Bob? Really? Problem oh, I, child. Clifford is incredible. Anything Clifford where there's is like an uptight straight man and like an agent of chaos uh, uh, who drives them insane. Is That's Uncle Ben's Buck relationship with his dad. Like John Candy. Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did but, rewatch but What About like Bob, a, and it was it was not. Great. I did not like it it's as a rewatch. Good. I loved it when I saw it the yes. first time. Yeah. It is one of those movies, I feel like when you watch it with adult eyes, you're like, it's in a weird midpoint between being really dark or being just aggressively joke, joke, joke. Yep. But when you're a kid, you're like, I want to see an adult just constantly do bits, like just be a totally. bit tornado. But then as you're an right. adult, you're like, oh my God, you are an interrupting person. this family's vacation, yeah. yes. you monster. Yes, sometimes, yes. That movie is sometimes <laughs> digging into the psychological reality of it. Yeah. And other times it's not. Also, we're just in this place now where it's like, oh God, he walks around with a pet goldfish. That's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> Like, we don't think anything's funny anymore. Everything is just too real. He does He does that, right? Uh, he does Medicine, medicine Man. Man. In Decent Proposal, he gets an executive producer credit on which means he probably wrote Had some draft or something. Love right. That movie. But you can't yes. really give him credit for that. He yeah. doesn't get screenplay credit. Then the only film he ever directs is Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag. Oh wrote God. and directed. <laughs> the Joe Pesci murder comedy. I like that movie, too. I mean, look, I will say this. He's kind of a major Ben filmmaker. <laughs> I've never seen Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag. David. It's, it's such a great title, although it it's one of the least commercial titles imaginable. Like, And becomes a shorthand joke for, like, the worst thing you could call a movie. Right, right. Uh, um, then he writes Holy Man, yeah, which is the Eddie, Eddie Murphy Murphy's, like, biggest guru flop. comedy. Yeah. He's like a spiritual That's a really who bad becomes movie. a QVC yeah. salesman. It sucks. That movie sucks. I don't know what genius is. He didn't write that. He, okay. The only other That's a write, Disney write. Channel original movie. He gets an executive producer credit on. He gets an executive producer credit on me, myself, and Irene. And his last screenplay credit is Welcome to Mooseport. The um, Ray Romano Gene Hackman comedy. Oh, okay, okay. Gene Hackman's Goodbye to Cinema. I just want to, now that we finished- He made that one and he he left Moose Now that we finished that arc, I just want to circle back and remind you that his career started with winning an Oscar for Dead Poets Society. Right. But Dead Poets Society is bad, right? Well, and you love Peter Weir. We're going to have to do Peter Weir because I want to do him so badly. Sure. But that have you? Do, how do you feel about Dead Poets Society? It's been a minute since I saw it. I don't. I remember it being very built up to me of like this is a masterpiece, it's be and then I cry. yep, and, and, and your life. yep, exactly. And then you know, I watched it and I was like, I I I didn't. I've seen it didn't it like stick. I don't really have times. any scenes that stick with me. There's no there's no like visuals that I clung to after seeing. I think it. of it as like obscenely cheesy, uh, yeah. and like Peter Weir like can give you like autumnal right like he gives right. you sort of like it's lush yes but like this like the movie's kind of sort of horseshit right the movie that <laughs> like, seems i guess like, it's so mocked as well the it, kind but of like, you know rip up your book for to any yeah. garbage, right? who was the age of the students when the movie came out big movie for right if you were 16 and right right that right. makes sense sure. that makes i sense. guess we're gonna talk about it we'll one talk day about for it sure yeah um so 
Medicine Man. Okay, so he okay, so this big package. They bring on McTurn- sure. McTurnan and Connery, like I said. Mm-hmm. They're pitching it to the press as like, okay, action movie guy. He's going to pivot to something more adult here. Right. Like this is his... Maybe not Oscar moment, but this is his, like, drama moment. Because this is the other thing I find fascinating. We've talked about McTiernan being, like, refreshingly unpretentious. Yeah. Where he yeah. never had this sense of, like, and now I'm I'm begging for respectability. Mm. I want the critics to see me as a major artist. I'm going to make Oscar bait, right? Like, he's not ever going to do a Dead Poet Society or a Scent of a Woman or something like this. Right, he's just doing, like, big, fun, enjoyable. Right films and this yeah. movie does feel like a swing for him away from like action popcorn but it also doesn't feel like he's striving for oscars it feels like he's just no. like i want to make the type of picture but, they don't make it like jamie was saying like that was a kind of movie that existed yeah. in the 90s still could be yes. a movie where it's like this is not explicitly oscar bait but it's a movie for grown-ups it's a movie for grown-ups right it was it, yes that's oh. exactly right it's like this is something parents will go see yes. right um, so Call the babysitter. Medicine Man comes out on yep, Friday. Uh, that's Sa- right. Yeah. Sally Robinson, who actually gets a credit, and Tom Stoppard rewrite the movie. That's it goes it. from The Stand to The Last Days of Eden, and then it's called Medicine Man. Uh, Connery basically says they never liked the script. While they're making the movie, they're still rewriting it. Oh, <laughs> my They spent $4 million. God. Like, Why did they start filming? It, the way he puts it, and this is in Premiere Magazine in February 1992, so it's like, ostensibly the feature selling the, movie. selling the movie. Connery's like, we were working on the script all the time, well into shooting. Don't start until you have the script, but they were committed to the locations, and after a certain period of time, the tail wags the dog, and here's the killer quote. Mm. And you still haven't got the casting right. So well, it sounds like Connery probably didn't love his co-star because there's no other actors in this film. No. Like, of, you know, of uh, major... Right, he's not you know, talking like, about, like... He's, he's fucking... One of the, yeah. Tribesmen really That's suck. right. That's I mean, right. <laughs> Wikipedia credits four actors. It's Connery, Lorraine Bracco, and two Jose's. Dr. Yeah. Ornega, and the fourth person they credit is just government man. Okay. Um, so uh, Bracco says, um, this is this is from her autobiography, okay. which is called On the Couch. It's sure. an autobiography. <laughs> oh, hey. uh, I wouldn't have minded the toughness of the shoot so much if the script had given my character half a brain. Uh, she's supposed to be a brilliant scientist, but you never would have known it from the lame dialogue. The original script, the one I'd read and loved, was a lot different from this final script. So maybe... There was a good movie, and Tom Stoppard, that dunce, fucked it up. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. <laughs> he put on his dunce cap and went do 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 onto a typewriter. <laughs> I, I, or maybe he comes in and he's like, eh, "This needs like you know some screwball like romance energy." I don't. I, I mean, I do agree with her though that like, I, I mean, look, her performance isn't helping it. I don't feel like this movie ever sells me on her being smart. Textually, like she's basically playing Doctor Vinnie Boombots the whole movie, <laughs> yeah. And it's not just because of the <laughs> the, the accent. Is there anything funnier <laughs> than, than Vinnie, Vinnie Boombots? Boombots? Oh my god! No, there, there's, there's that was my no. joke when the Hassan Minaj stuff went down. <laughs> yeah, where I'm like, you know, another thing I'm hearing is he didn't even, you know, Ronnie didn't even have a doctor named Vinnie Boombots. Like, I don't think that guy's real. <laughs> it's a construction. <laughs> No doctor would ever get a license if you were that bad. <sighs> right? It's just like, it feels like she's just giving false, like, assessments of things the entire film. And the only time I actually am like, oh, she does seem pretty smart is when she says she's not qualified. Yeah, when she's like, I'm not a field scientist. When she was like, I'm not a field scientist. I own my failings. But there was like a moment where I was like, oh, her kind of admitting her her lack of experience makes me think she actually is really experienced in the things she is experienced sure. in. Right. We're just not getting to see. I no, swear to you. I'm so it. put me in a normal lab. Right. Let yeah, me yeah, in a yeah. molecular bio bio yeah. lab or whatever. I'm it nice. Is. I talk in hushed room tones. Um, so some other facts about Lorraine Bracco. Apparently she was a model and DJ in France for most of the yep. 70s and 80s. Pretty oh. cool. Uh, her, her big, film career big kinda, break is Goodfellas, right. essentially. Her film career kind of starts late because she's modeling and and I guess DJing for years. Oh. Then she works in Italian films for a while. She doesn't oh. start doing English language movies until like the mid to late eighties, and then Goodfellas is like, yeah, kind um, of out of nowhere. Where is she from? She's from the Bronx. No, I don't know where she. She might be. I think uh, she's from Brooklyn. Okay, she's from Bay Ridge, yeah. Okay. Brooklyn. Yeah. Uh, her father, you might be surprised to hear, Italian. 
Italian descent, but her her mother is English, uh-huh. uh, and her mother was a war bride. Uh, came okay. over uh, after World War II. Uh, yeah, you know, and then she yeah she was a model for Jean Paul Gaultier in the seventies. Lorraine oh. Bracco. I mean, had a pretty cool, fascinating life. Yeah, she dated Harvey. Uh, was maybe married, married to Harvey, to Car- Car- Harvey Keitel and, and then married to Edward James, James Olmos. Right. Both of which seem to be very dramatic marriages Correct. that you can Google too much to get into here. Yep, a lot. Um, but yeah, post Goodfellas, like we say, she does Medicine Man and Radio Flyer. Um, McTiernan did not want to cast her. Connery wanted her. Interesting. Uh, and brought Interesting. her in. Uh, the shoot. Again, it, it, there's look. nothing on who else ever would have been in talks or on their list. Because I, at some point, I want to get into a conversation of maybe there's no version of this movie that is great. But who does this work better within that role? Uh, it doesn't. I'm not seeing any talk. The whole the whole problem is no one talked about this movie except for like one premiere magazine article. Right. After it came out, it bombed and everyone just washed Moved their on. hands of it ever yeah. existing. Lorraine Bracco, it looks like she shadowed. It probably got a, a chapter in her, her great autobiography on the couch <laughs> where she shits all over it. But that might be it. Like... It's not like Connery's going back and being like, you know, Medicine Man was, you know, it was just two degrees away from being good. You know, like, you know, he's made a lot of bombs. It's also fascinating, though, because I'm trying to remember who it was. It was one of the, it might have been Brian Koppelman or one one of the screenwriters who's active on Twitter and Mm -hmm, does sort of mm -hmm. like half advice, half old showbiz stories. Yep, yep. Um, But talked about working with Connery on a script for a matter of weeks in a hotel suite that he had rented in Brooklyn. There was some script that then he was interested in, but he needed to work on it with them. Mm. This was sort of a, a Twitter thread when Connery died. Sure. Memorializing him. And Sean Connery, another obviously complicated person. Yes. You can Google. But I think it, I think it was Koppelman, but he was saying, like, there are things in, like, two weeks of going in every day and working on the script with him for eight hours a day that, like, taught me more about story than anything else in my career. Like, the man had an unbelievable sense of how to structure things, how audiences process characters. Like, he really thought big picture about everything. Wow. After two weeks, he dropped off the movie. I felt crushed, like I'd failed. And I heard this from a lot of people of, like, he does this. He really tests things out. It's hard to get him to commit. You shouldn't take this as, like, a failure. But the whole point was, like, this guy gets it. And he, like, fucking won't go forward until it totally he obviously has other flops and misses in his career like League of Extraordinary Gentlemen is him openly admitting I didn't understand the script but I was angry at myself for passing on Lord of the Rings and The Matrix so I thought I should do one of these movies I don't understand but it's like how does he then look he liked her in Goodfellas like that's his story on why he brings her in here on a script level too it's like how does this guy not see that all of these pieces aren't working? And I guess he did and just uh, t- well, tail wagging the dog. Here's the thing. Jamie, have you ever shot a film in the jungle? <laughs> <laughs> I have not. Either are, with so, or without Sean Connery. <laughs> so McTiernan already made Predator, and we already did our Predator episode. And what's in the research of that? It was a fucking nightmare. nightmare. The jungle sucks. You're getting dysentery you're yes. getting bitten by bugs yep. you know the weather is unpredictable had to bring their own leaves yeah like they forgot that the leaves are going to fall off the trees so they had to bring leaves they go back to the jungle for this movie mm-hmm. i would never do this and guess no. what it sucked and they had a bad time yeah you never hear about anyone having a good time in the jungle ever i'm realizing now in the commentary for predator when he keeps on saying like i mean i learned things on this movie so the next time i went and filmed in the jungle and that he's I talking about right. this right right uh, they so he sends them to what he called tree school uh, oh. to learn how to like you know zip line zip line and, and bounce around sure, the trees. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Do you think they're school. going into this being like this is our hook? Like this is the thing that people are going to talk about. You've never seen zip line photography like this. It if, did feel like it predated like the popularity of that being an activity. Yeah, and that and the like eighties trend of like movies having the hook of. There's an activity or a subculture that we're depicting with movie stars. Yep. You know, like the range from like Lombada to like cocktail of like, here's a thing that some people are really good at. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to alternate between movie stars and stuntmen doing it well in a way that now feels glamorous. 
Yeah, that's so, yeah, because it's like there, there's zip lining, but then there's also, there's a lot of like harness talk. Yeah. There's a lot of ropes. There's a lot of like, here, catch this. Yeah. Like, no, no, trust me, <laughs> catch it. Okay. Like there, yeah, that, that, that feels like a, the very, it's a very big sort of like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, it's almost like another character in the, the movie the is the harnesses and cords. And the zip lines could be third build in this they movie are, above they are. the poster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The winch is doing a lot of work. The winch is kind of holding this whole movie together. I mean, yeah. in, in a practical way. Yes. yes. Um, but even that, just like the fact that they were like, okay, movie's got a green light. Time to go to tree school. Like our priorities <laughs> are getting this right. It's like, yeah, it's not It's not like, guys, like Sean Connery needs to go work out because he's wearing right. like frumpy like cargos and things. Or let's do two weeks of rehearsals to make sure this chemistry is right. There's no, they, they yeah, I mean, I don't think, I like, I watched this movie, I don't think they spoke until the first take started rolling. Look, again, aren't they chemists too, by the way? Oh, yeah, they should be the God. first to identify right. the they lack should be of experts. Experts. It's a great point. It's a great point. He just raises say. a great point. That yeah. would have been a great thing of like the chemistry, you know, they understand how to do chemistry in the lab, but they will they have it together or whatever. Oh, that, Some you're kind saying of that little, should have been marketing. Yeah, it should have been a little marketing. But also smart. the critics could have used that against this movie. Totally. Yeah. Somebody should have the said only somebody thing, should have made that point. The only thing that's this my, movie can't cook up in a lab is There we go. Right. That's that's what I meant. So Bracco brought her acting coach on set within a week or two. Not okay. a good sign. Mm-hmm. That's definitely not what you It you're... says within a week or two? Yeah. I don't think she was there for those first few scenes, I'm telling you. Yeah. Uh, she would have said something. Connery tells Premier Magazine, basically, I was in, he says I was in the middle of a triangle. I think he's basically like saying, like, McTiernan needed to do something and he wasn't doing it, uh-huh. right? Mm. Like, he says... He's got all his toys, you know. He's got his little videos. So he sees when he's getting on screen, which is helpful to him, but no help at all to the actor. You know, he's basically, I don't think Connery is saying I needed help. He's saying no. someone else did. By the way, Jimmy, this is what's crazy. John McTunin went to Juilliard. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, uh, Like, you you're know. like, oh, this is a classic example of a guy who's just like a technical filmmaker and doesn't know how to talk to actors. His starting point is... Drama at Juilliard. Wow. And then he becomes a commercial director. That is a new wrinkle. That's really interesting. So it's not even like, well, how could you, this guy doesn't have a language for actors. Right. And up until this point, he cast well and he let people do their own thing. Right. And so many directors are not like an actor's director. Right. But right. you're like, this guy like this did guy fucking should three be the years guy. of the hardcore yep. drill into the yeah. language of drama. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. So, and specifically like Juilliard for directing. Yep. Yeah. I know. Wow. I, well, I don't know what to tell you. And then you. Connery is like, yeah, he was just busy looking at screens. Well, because at this point, he's such a, he's made these three action movies. He's probably like more, I don't know. Well, he only had $40 million. Dollars. He didn't have he a lot did. of support in the little, jungle. His little tiny it's just film. him. Um, apparently, Sean insisted that um, Bracco get flown to L.A. to attend the Oscars. Okay. Because uh, that was the, she was nominated. Oh, so they're filming this? 91. So this is or really 90. her immediate 90, yeah. Goodfellas follow-up. Or right, no, early 91, right, exactly. Um, wow. Bracco thanks him in her autobiography. She says, I've always said that Sean Connery gave me a chance to meet Cinderella for an evening, and I'll never forget it. Okay. So that was apparently Connery doing that. But also, the other thing I'm reading here is that she got to the Oscars because, quote, part of Sean's agreement with the producers of Medicine Man was a certain number of hours on a private jet. Sure. Good for him. I mean, that makes sense. Like, yeah. you're going to gas up my jet 10 times if I'm going to do your stupid jungle movie or whatever. Yeah. Uh, this Premier Magazine feature that I've been quoting from, I'm realizing, Lorraine declined to participate. Okay. So another point underlining mm. tension. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, she says later, uh, that it was a hor- horrific creative experience for her and she did the best she could under the circumstances. Um, yeah. So, you know, whatever. It, it sounded bad. Uh, they want to shoot it in Mexico. The it's the exact same gone. city they end up going to for the second half of Predator. Yeah. They, oh. um, they, they don't really use the actual Amazon because that is like a true, I think, hell to shoot mm-hmm. in. So they go to Southern Mexico um and uh they got a lot of tree talk who fucking cares all right move on this is a classic Uh, force through the trees truly mctiernan's only paying attention to what the trees are like uh connery says uh the food was appalling everybody got sick i wasn't sick only because i drank so much vodka 
Okay. Oh. That was uh, part of his character, too, is that he's like kind of a lush. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I wonder if they baked that, if that was a on set kind of rewrite. I think that might have been uh, kind of an automatic rewrite for any part he was playing. Yeah, maybe that's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, apparently, Connery shut down the set at one point, uh, would speed through scenes quickly so he could leave early. Uh, to I go don't, where? I, I, anywhere else is <laughs> like. <laughs> I mean, Connery. A, a different part of the show. Connery yeah, ended like, up. Where are you going, man? When he retired, because he retired basically in the early 2000s. He retired. And then he died 03. like two years ago, Correct. right? So he lived in the Bahamas for like the last 20 years of his life. Yeah. Like he definitely became one of those guys who's just like, give me a compound. I'll just sit here in a straw hat and reminisce on how I used to and think play it was golf all day. cool to hit women. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> right. Um, that uh, is probably what he would do. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this film was planned for Oscar season 1991, and then it got delayed. Hmm, Interesting. I wonder why. Okay. Uh, and it was, uh, if I haven't pointed this out already, distributed by uh, Disney. Walt Disney Pictures. Disney. I mean, under Hollywood. Through, right. One of their Hollywood adults. and Touchstone were their two huh. grown-up brands. But this is a Disney movie. That would explain why there was even more sort of shtick and less, you know, yeah. steamy less chemistry. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this movie better if it's a fuck fest? I'm asking that genuinely. Well, I I, I would prefer. Yes. It, but like but if not it's with just, the two of them. Not That's really the with thing. the two of them. Not with the two of them. But like, no. say, is this movie better if like, end of act one, they start fucking, act two, they they have lots of sex and then break up in some, you know, okay. big drama. Can, can we talk? Act three, they heal, and maybe by the end they're going to figure it out. Probably, but to, if we're having this conversation, can we talk alternate casting ideas? Yes. Yeah, please. Pl- please. By all means. Yes. Okay. So, oh, a ham sandwich and a bag of potato chips. Sounds good. Bring them in. They're going to be better. <laughs> Let I mean, Connery, Connery fuck the Lay's Rocco. bag. <laughs> Just like I, I just. <laughs> That's the other thing. Connery can kind of have chemistry with anyone. In what his do you career. think of Sean Connery, Jamie? I've, Weigh in on Connery. Okay, I've never. Well, when people are always like he's like a sex symbol, I I never really understood that, and I'm not saying that because I don't, I can't recognize that he is like a, a striking presence, sure. an attractive man. I there is no piece of me that understands. Like no, not. That's sorry. There's a piece of me that understands the appeal. Sure. There's no piece of me where that really resonates with me. You don't feel me. it. I don't feel it at sure. all. Have and I've seen... never felt it. And I've never seen a I've never seen the evidence. Have you seen like Young Bond? Yeah. And even then, okay. Yeah. I just like maybe I maybe I need to rewatch that. I, mm. I just never it never he, worked on me. I mean he's or something. He's hot. He's definitely, he's super hot in the Bonds, but in this, you know, he's got this, like, scary edge. You talk about it, that he's, whenever we bring this up, that, like, he is scary he's in scary. those movies in a way the other Bonds aren't. Right. And, like, you know, when he does a non-Bond, what does he do? He does, like, Marnie or something, where he's right. basically an outright villain. Right. Or, like, Again, all the with this, like, war sexual pictures. dark yes. edge. Yeah. He plays, like, haunted guy when he's young. Yeah, yeah. And then in the 70s, he starts, like, becoming more of this kind of, like, guy in a cravat who sounds like he just, like, right. you know, went through four cigars because he probably did. Yes. Like, and he's masculine and hairy and, like, it's like Zardoz and fucking Robin and Marion sure. and uh, Orient Express and yeah. stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. You know, like, where he's, he's like a, you know, big fella. You're making me realize, like, even if, okay, so, like, even if it was still, we're still in this sort of Disney world where, like, the, you know, it's as as it was in the movie. They never, nothing ever happens. They don't, nothing physical happens between mm-hmm. them. I, I still, I, I still am looking for a woman who's going to call him on his shtick. Of, right. And I felt like, it again, fighting fire with fire. It was just kind of like anger towards his sort of, uh, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, uh... He's kind of closed off. You know, you don't really get to know him that well. Like, I want someone who get, makes him a little more vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And I think the fact that that never really happens is the reason it feels like they don't have chemistry, whether they followed through with it or not. He never really feels like he's brought low, except by he's that not he, brought low. He's lost the fucking cancer cure, yeah. which has Even nothing to do with that. Bring him that low. He's just kind of annoyed about it. Yeah, <laughs> where it go? Well, it, the lowest point happens long before. That's the, movie. the thing. He already went through it all, and when that's she right, shows up, he's just it. a grump. Right. 
He's right. just Mr. Grump. He's grumpy. And when he talks, and she's grumpy. Right. And she's, yeah. It's fighting grump with grump. Mm. It's grump on grump. So here's an alternate casting thought. Okay. Because I'm watching it and I'm like, okay, this movie's pushing the Bronx thing really hard. I don't know if that was a rewrite when they cast Bronco or if that was always part Wait, of the Wait, can script. I interrupt for two seconds? Please. Okay, I just want to know, did you guys have the same instinct of the second it started, you're thinking, this is miscast? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. No, yeah. the second she's Immediate. talking, it's it's God the bless first. Her. It was the first thought. It was like, whoa, this what? This is a mistake. Okay, okay. Like, keep going. Wait, something, something bad has happened. Right, here. right. Oh, Immediate. It, it haunts you as you watch it. It does. There's also, there's a later scene where he's trying to like run away and take a shower under the waterfall uh-huh. and like fucking just grump around and she comes up oh, behind him and like calls him into action. Splish splash. <laughs> splish splash. <gasps> I'm taking a bath, damn it. <laughs> but he's there. Fucking ants. He's there under the waterfall and she comes up behind him and she has to like yell really loud so she yeah. can he can hear yes, her. Yes, I remember this. And the thing I clocked was like Oh, this is the volume she's been talking yeah. at the entire film. Like you talking about her seeming miscast immediately. It's not just the brashness of the energy of the performance or the accent or any of that. She also enters the movie and she's like, "Hi, I'm here." <laughs> the I, fuck are you I'm, doing? I'm holding my head in my hands because, like, you <laughs> don't want to be like, like I hate how, how that lady yelled for the whole movie. Right. But literally, I hated how she's just fucking yelling the whole goddamn she movie. Yells I'm, so I'm not saying much. yelling is like an energy thing. I'm saying she's like she's yelling like <laughs> at a Q and A inside like, voice. She's a woman in the back row of a Q and A saying like, "I don't need the mic." So my question is, <laughs> 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 like, that is the tone. Of her speech the whole thing. Never... First time caller, yes. long time listener. By the way, I don't have a phone. I'm yelling at you from my house to the radio station. <laughs> Where? Okay, just to and I present your alternative casting in a second, but just I understand I also most, have a thought most of, the of our listeners thing. are not going to watch this movie sure. because why would they? Yeah. Just the premise of the film is he's in the jungle and she's been sent there to like check on his research. Uh-huh. That's that's it. Yes. That's right. Like that's that's the only she's not there being like, I need this from you. No. Or I'm here to help you. It's also she's not, just here to be like, what's like going covering. on? Right. Like, yeah. It's like the vaguest assignment. It's not even what I assumed the setup of this movie would be, which is like the apocalypse now style. We sent this guy and he right. went we off the grid. We can't find him. You have Go to find him. Which is how they set it up. Yes. You think it's gonna be like, whoa, right? What happened? And, and then said, you, knock, and then knock, it's like, there checking. he is. Yeah, yeah. He's like, what are you doing here? I found you. <laughs> is she his boss? She what is her position for the company that right, funds right. him? But no, she is not his boss. She's not not his boss in she, terms of who's putting up the money. She's she like can the kind of. She can't like fuck him over, but she could, I guess, report back. Report like, back. Hey, report he's back. blowing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. She's and it would like cause him trouble. Sent out on behalf of his boss. But and she but then, doesn't like, seem immediately like... it doesn't matter because he's like, I cured cancer and I can't find it. And she's right. like, oh, Jesus. Well, let's find it. You know, like that's sort of restate what for anyone who becomes. didn't watch the film. This movie is about him finding the cure for cancer and in, losing it. And in ants. In ants. I mean, spoiler alert, it was ants all along. It was it was the ants all along. Um, OK, so who do you okay. want to play Lorraine Bracco? So first, Bracco? I'm like, I'm trying to think literally about like the the brassy city girl Wait, aspect. In sorry, setup. I have one more interruption. I, well, actually, there may be more, but I'm going to try to limit them. No, um, the, when, you I just want to say when you were talking about the waterfall scene, I think the reason that was also so jarring is because we've seen the imagery yes. of the the male lead in the waterfall or she's in the waterfall and then the other person she comes, comes behind him they're gonna into fuck. the waterfall yeah. and you're yeah. like here we go yeah but instead it's him sort of drowning himself in the waterfall to like escape his inner darkness <laughs> and, and her, she her comes shrill. up behind him not unlike i mean i haven't seen predator in very long but not unlike what i would imagine predator or alien yes, the, stalking kind of comes up behind him and she's like <laughs> like <laughs> get the fuck out of that waterfall yeah and i was just like wait this trope fell apart yes and that's the moment where i'm like is this movie to its credit it not cuts. even attempting romance Grimm, it cuts it, oh, it hard cuts no it's like it's like the moment is like ah! and yes. then it cuts it's, and you're like wait what you are right that it ends up playing more like a jump scare than- it is a jump scare <laughs> yes oh my god okay keep going oh i mean to say 
So I'm thinking about the City Girl thing because it said so much in the script that I'm like, is that part of the the contrast they want here, right? Yeah. It does feel like who this movie, and I know she's in a bit of a weird wilderness period in her career at this point, but like the different Scorsese discovery Oscar nominee from 10 years earlier, who is, I believe, the same age as Lorraine Bracco, it feels like as written, this is more Kathy Moriarty than it is Lorraine Bracco. Kathy Moriarty. Okay. Now, what's she up to lately? Though? Well, Look her up. she had a big, she's, she's the wife in Raging Bull. It's the same kind of like. She really is, just doesn't do a lot of movies. Though. No, this yeah. is what I'm saying. She comes back in the 90s because she does Raging Bull and then she does Neighbors. And then I'm, am I mistaken in thinking she got in a car accident? Uh, that sounds possible because she took a huge. She took a huge oh, break. I remember break. Her. Um, but you're right that by the 90s, she's in Kindergarten Cop. She's in right. Soap Dish. Loved her in Soap Dish. Uh, she's in Mambo Kings in 92. I'm not saying she's perfect, but it almost feels like that's more of what they want. And Bracco feels like, like Rosie Perez. Okay, David, thank you. Because like that this is like thing. a real Rosie Perez moment. Like that's Fearless my... is maybe the year after this. And like if you want to yeah, have bring if up, you don't uh, want to modify the script one iota. Right. If you just want a hand as written to another actress, right? Rosie Perez yelling at him in this same way is funny and charming. Agreed. And Agreed. maybe it's just like the size, the fact that they seem like they're from different planets. Which is her what innate I think you comic need. energy. Yes. I think you need more. I think it's so if you're gonna have this, you need them to be more different. Because yes. they're kind of the same. Yes. Which I think is the ultimate problem. They're too similar. They're both just grumpy. Right. And, like, they don't really love life. They have no zest for life, no joie de vivre. They're just kind of, like, grumping around in the wilderness. And, like, Rosie Perez complaining about shit and yelling at people in movies is one of the greatest things we have. It's always entertaining. Maybe a Marissa Tomei. Tomei could fucking do it. So we're sticking, we're obviously sticking very, like, New York here. So now I'm going to shift laterally. Right, yeah, yeah. The most obvious movie star version of this, and I know this is the same year she really pops so it's like if she does this she maybe doesn't get the better role she should have gotten but Sharon Stone mm. feels like the obvious Definitely. kind of Hollywood cast. she's got the A-list I can go toe-to-toe with anybody right. that's right that's right which is totally and, you and know. while still being you know 20 plus years younger than Sean Connery yep. does not feel like a child next to him right which, right like Rosie Perez might kind might, of. yeah Rosie Perez is like 10 years younger than Lorraine Bracco uh, yeah, she's younger. Kathy Moriarty is also younger, um, surprisingly. Right, because she's really young and raging bull. Um, but, um, Sharon Stone, uh, what about, like, Uma Thurman's too young. I mean, this is, okay, so what about Connery, though? Are we keeping Connery? He makes sense as kinda, Guy in the I Jungle. I kind of like does. Connery doing this. Like, he makes sense as, Sadly, essentially... I didn't even think for a second we're replacing Connery. Well, obviously, he's also, at this point, like, the whole thing with him is he's Bond, and then his 70s is defined by, like, you don't want to play James Bond because you're going to end up like Sean Connery. You're going right. to be, like, tough to cast. Everyone's going to associate with Bond. You're going to make bombs. Mm-hmm. But then the 80s, especially the later 80s, it's like Highlander, Name of the Rose, Untouchables wins an mm-hmm. Oscar, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, Hunt for Red October, Robin Hood. Like, you know, it's like... Well, what's hit, wild hit, hit. is he, like, owns Elder Statesman, and it makes him kick back up higher on the leading man list. Yeah. Like, there's there's also this thing with him that's fascinating of, like, he was losing his hair when he got cast as James Bond. Mm. He wore a toupee from the beginning. Oh, I didn't know that. And then basically was just sort of like, I'll, I'll do whatever the movie requires. Yeah. Like, I'm not pretending I'm not bald in real life. Wait, I'm like that wasn't his real hair it. in no. this movie? That, <laughs> that's what's also insane. What? Is, like, in Indiana Jones, he's just, like, showing his skull, right? Like, yeah. same in Untouchables. When he's doing press and premieres, he's not, like, wearing a toupee to maintain appearances. So there were meetings where they were like, okay, Sean's coming in with, like, the, like, gray horseshoe and beard. How do we fit this? And they're like, build a ponytail. <laughs> build a ponytail to a build fix. It, build a ponytail. We have, we have to construct this ponytail. Yeah. What, what if it's— In the puppet workshop. Yes. <laughs> Jim <What>? Henson's <laughs> creature <laughs> workshop. What if it's Harrison Ford? <laughs> That's what I was. That was my only other Ooh. thought. He's good at playing a grump. He's obviously. so good. Yeah. He's so good. Mosquito Coast. Oh, wait, wait. 
I just invoked a third Peter Weir movie. You did. But like, you know, like he's played Lost in the Jungle. Oh, he'd You're be like, wonderful. Like that. He'd be wonderful. If this, is, if this is Harrison Ford and Marissa Tomei, <gasps> does this movie rule? That sounds better. There's no way that this movie, if we're using this script, can rule. The I agree. script is incredibly inert. Yes. The story just is mostly just nothing happening. Mm-hmm. There's not much of an ending. But there are ideas I like in there, it. Th- that's the thing. There's ideas to this setup that yeah. maybe you can play around with. But like, if I'm giving this script to three other people, I don't think they're going to make a good movie. Six Days, Seven Nights is, is a less dramatic version of this movie Harrison Ford tries to do a couple years later with a comedy director. I, I mean, Six Days, Seven Nights, though, is more action-packed. It is. It's, it's more comical, like yeah. you're saying. Yeah. That movie, but Ford doesn't make sense in that movie. No, he, he doesn't. It's too funny. He'd make more sense mm-hmm. than I mean, this. Not he that would. I, right, he'd make more because sense Because he doesn't have this. to be that, he doesn't really have to be that funny. No, but like, like what him, and, okay. him and Tomei in this, oh, I think, what about that? I'm immediately laughing in my mind just what? imagining the two of them talking to each other, and I do want to watch them kiss. What about... Yeah, for sure. Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn. Well. Just oh get them God. together. They're an actual couple. Yeah. But, it, but yes, yes, yes. But at this point, I'm like, here's the pitch. Bring in Nora or Nancy and have them start over from page one. That's right. Sure. You, That's right. You readapt this premise into straight up screwball comedy, right? What about Costner? Yeah, the, the, cancer's, the cancer curing really does get in the way. The cancer curing is a huge problem because you're it's like— a problem. <laughs> You cure cancer? Right. I'm calling the United States military. Right. We're there is a government element jungle. that is not, that is not, it, it, it almost requires, you know what it is? It's it's a little bit, um, almost in the tone of like outbreak or something. Yes. If that's really what you're doing. Yes. It's more of a Russo and who was the guy? Uh, Hoffman. Thank you. It's it's that kind of energy. No, but you're right. If, if this movie is... Bring in Efron, start from page one. You're re- retrofitting this to Goldie and Kurt. And she's like, first note, the medication they find is like a weight loss pill. Uh, yeah. It's not the cure for cancer. No. Okay. I'm just, I'm They're like, they work now. for some drug company or something. Right. Yeah. Let's gender flip it. Okay. Sharon Stone plays the Connery role. Okay. I'm taking, or or give me an A-lister. Give me another A-lister. Well, it's Kathleen not, Turner. it's not Julia. No, too young. Yeah. Kathleen Turner. Sarandon? Sarandon? Susan Sarandon. Ugh. Okay. Wow. Jamie out on Sarandon. Uh, and someone like, who's like a, like Wesley Snipes <laughs> is the young, uh, we need like a new star. Yeah. So Wesley Snipes, who's probably just a few years in at this point, it's 91. Yeah. Like, okay. He's coming or Denzel or someone well, like let, that. Okay. Well then let me flip it again. Now I'm just like, what if we cast like Orson Welles? I'm just casting <laughs> a great actor. Let me flip it again. What if there's no romance? What if it's Wesley and Woody? What if it's oh. Harrelson and Snipes together again? <laughs> well, wait a second. <laughs> We're they just, haven't. This would be before. This would be White the first man one? can't jump would okay, have to be I a medicine up. man reunion. It's a year later. Really? Or no, it's the same. It's 92. Right. Okay. So that's why Perez kind of can't do it because she's still kind of growing. Hmm. Oh, boy. I mean, I think we have come up with some good ideas here. But we are stuck with um, Sean Connery and Lorraine Bracco. Mm-hmm. God, the f- now that we've spitballed all these other ideas it's i can't believe we're coming back to <laughs> it's, it's and now we have to sit and in the of that's what happened that's what happened i mean i can't even believe that that's that that's like canon that's much, crazy look much like nomads his other film so far that we've watched that has no reputation really jody foster Okay. I'm sorry. I'm looking through Best Actress nominees. I mean, she's... Jodie Foster as Connery role what? or as the... Could kind of do... She really... It could go yeah. both ways. I mean, Michelle Pfeiffer. Ooh, that's a great one. Yeah. I mean, you're naming the big star. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Sigourney. They're also all believable as... Sigourney. A doctor. Be. Yeah. Or, or whatever she yes. is. A research A neurochemist. Chemist, she whatever is she's... Uh... A, a biochemist, <laughs> biochemist, yeah, and she is a doctor and a re- mm-hmm. and a researcher. So the idea is, he's in the jungle. She's Bet showing Midler. Up. Sorry, that's the other one I was trying to remember. Bet Midler, Midler, mm. of course. Yes, good that point. Is fun. Yeah, we're we're really losing steam on your yeah. suggestions. Oh my god, <laughs> Bet Midler in the jungle. I would I would pay all the, the only money person to see louder that. than Brock. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. He's... Falling onto that tree branch. Oh. The bits. Bette Midler with like blood coming. 
Oh my god, that'd be incredible. <laughs> By the way, guys, that is an actual scene. She falls onto a tree branch. Yeah. Anyways. He is uh, some sort of, you know, researcher. He's in the jungle in the Amazon right. rainforest. She's checking in to see how his work's going. She's ostensibly, like, bringing supplies. She sure. is not whoever he thought... He, he thought she was going to be, like, his... Uh, someone he knows. The usual guy, whatever. Right. Yeah. Uh, his... Robert Campbell, that's Sean Connery's character, has uh-huh. already been abandoned by his research partner and his wife. Mm-hmm. Like, we are meeting him, as we said... At a fairly low ebb. I'd say the lowest of the low. Uh, and he also found a cure to cancer and then forgot it or hasn't found, you know, hasn't right. figured out well, how he doesn't. He, found it. he doesn't want to ever go back to society. He wants to stay here. You find out that he basically got into a dick measuring contest with this tribe's medicine man. Yep. Yes. Who then said, fuck it, I'm out. So now he feels an obligation to stay and treat and by dick medicine, d- dick, dick medicine, dick measuring contest, you mean he like sort of showed him up by using Alka Seltzer in front of him? That, pop, pop, right. Can I just say something? Yeah. That, all of that, the fact that all of that took place off camera, it's all in the expo- it was all exposition, Correct. right? Yeah. It's all that, just said. I, when he was just saying that, I was like, wait, what? Can like, we see I, that? You don't, yes, we need to see it or a flashback or so, something. If the whole thing hinges on the word met, medicine <laughs> man and we're just hearing about yes. you replace this guy we haven't met yet. I was like, what? This is so convoluted. I, mean, I thought. I don't know if oh, you guys no, I felt agree that with you. way. I watched this movie this morning and I'm already forgetting the order in which the information is dispensed because you keep on thinking, okay, so that's what's going on with Connery's character and then they add another layer. Right. But I think the first thing is I accidentally chased their medicine man out of town, so now I have an obligation to stay and help these people, right? Apparently, there's already been incidents of, like, foreign pathogens getting people sick. He's very on he's edge when she shows up. anxious about that. She shows up and he's like, where's your you mask? Yes, where's your mask? I mean your surgical mask. Right, I need to see your vaccine card. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of weird pandemic stuff. Also, by the way, her, yeah. him being like, I need to see your vaccine card, and she's like, oh, God! You're like, <laughs> you're a fucking doctor, too! You it's should true. be like, of course, she here's should my get vaccine it. card. Yeah. Yes, rather than being put like, out. It's like, what, what are you even doing here? And like, I need a right. bath. I need a hot meal. <laughs> I have to show my fucking vaccine card. You're Where's like, the what? closest spa? <laughs> look, it's like, are like, look, fucking we're doing comically exaggerated you, voices. You went on this job. Like, you have a job to fill. It was so insane. The boy, we are exaggerating the voice. But, but only it's a little. not a far only cry. A little. Guys. It's not a far cry. As one would think. So that's the first reveal. Then the second reveal is, oh, he's found the cure for cancer, yes. I believe. <laughs> and she's like, why are you not sharing this with the world? And it's a two-part thing. One of it is wh- one part of it is this is based on th- the element that they have in their tribe. If I let everyone else know that I found this thing and synthesize it, they'll come in, right. run trucks through the town right. and fuck them up. Right. It's like a trolley car problem yes. of I'd rather protect them than save the rest of society. Uh, and as an example, you, Lorraine Bracco, are too young to remember this, but the same company that we work for previously did this to a different tribe with a different element that they thought they could synthesize into some other right. treatment. Right. And all of them got swine flu right. and they all were wiped out. I will not allow this to happen again. And then the third reveal of his backstory is that he was the one responsible for, for that, that incident. Right. It's too many. Right. So that, he's that's right. That comes out later. Yes. Guilt laden of, I let this happen one time. I cannot let it happen again. I have to choose the native people over the corporation this time. And, and then in and the, between reveals on, two and three comes the reveal of, I also can't, replicate the cancer treatment. Right, because I don't know what, I like, magic it, formula. But there's some X factor thing that every time I try to repeat also, it, it doesn't work. Also, there's, like, and a I logging... Have, I only have this much cancer treatment left. Right, I only have a little bit. Also, there's, like, a logging company that's, like, headed this way. They're already paving a road that's gonna right. attack this town. There's too, too many things. He's been getting wasted on loogie, like, fruit liquor. Yeah, he just yeah, he's keeps got drinking. spit booze that gets him <laughs> blasted. <laughs> But when we all when we're saying all this, we're making the film sound somewhat dynamic and yes. dense and interesting. When in fact, it's just like staring at leaves while you hear a lady from the Bronx scream in the distance. It's like it, it's, Connor it's so boring. Like quietly getting drunk and saying, "Please let me die." Fuck off! And Lorraine Bracco yelling at him. 
Um, Making it's him want to die more. Yes. It's not sexy. No. Uh, it's not Marketed like... Marketed to be sexy. Yes, but yeah. it's not. But not at all. There's also a version of this movie that is just... Unfortunately, the bad news is I synthesized the cure for cancer one time, but it's with this ingredient that's in the toughest part of the jungle. We're going to have to journey for five days. Right. And then it's kind of like romancing the stone of just the trials and tribulations. Yep. Which this movie does a section of this, but it's more just like, this is an annoying journey versus like, oh no, mudslide. Oh no, we're fighting hippopotamus. Right. Like, there's but there was ver- some of that. There was a little bit. There's a little bit of hijinks. And but, you're like, wait. But there's a version of this movie that is just, we know what we need to get to. Yes, I would and love we that. Get there. And yep. it's just about can we make it there and back a lot? Just a clean, we gotta, we're at point A, no. we gotta get to B. This movie yeah. like, wants to be a morality drama. And I don't think it is even attempting to say anything really profound. Like this doesn't feel They're like not, an it's not. issues movie, but it is like we're trying to create a, a an internal moral conflict for this man that is so compelling, a man who is so tortured and broken that you cannot help but get engaged in what's going on with him. And perhaps only the love of a good woman, a smart scientist, right. could save this man and save humanity. It's almost like it's almost like take it's almost like take like the the brooding, tortured nature of like Casey Affleck in Manchester by the sea <laughs> and then marry it with the fun of uh, what is that movie with Sandra Bullock and the Lost City? The Lost City. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's yes. the Lost right. City meets Manchester. By but it's right. neither as dramatic as the former, right. or as sort of fun, fun. and zippy as the exactly. latter. Exactly, yeah. and and not really as pr- I can't. Even, there's yeah. There's no. It's not profound either. No. But they wanted it to be. Yes, but it, they but wanted also, it to be. Yeah, I something. think they wanted it to be deep. They I wanted guess. it to have some messaging. Yeah. And but it yeah. also doesn't feel like. Like, this is a movie that has something specific to say about the state of the world. That's right. It's like dealing in abstract ideas. Yeah. Right? Because it's like, the movie's all hinged on, what if you just magically discovered the cure for cancer? So it's not like, oh, what is the ethical responsibility of our of our biochemists in this world today? No, because also it's like, either the road's going to get him or you curing cancer is going to get him. Like, which no one says out loud in this movie, but it's like, yeah, these guys are probably screwed. The yeah. road is actually like a dumb element for the I script to it. include. I it, really it's wish just it like wasn't a, in there. We need a ticking clock, but it's true. It doesn't make any sense because then you're just like, well, they're screwed anyway. Right. Absolutely. Because I the movie really isn't about like them that. trying to stop the road. No. Like, that's a different movie. That's, that's an environmental right. movie about, like, yeah, we can't r- build roads in the Amazon. That's also a movie where he, like, trains the tribe to attack. Yep. Like, yeah, like, and, like, maybe, like, Home Tree gets attacked. Yes. And then they have to don their banshees. And right. yeah, I'm doing Avatar. I'm Someone just, would I'm have just... to plug into the Mighty Akron, find a way to tame Taruk and become the first Taruk Mikto that tribe had had in decades. <laughs> You're doing a better job than me. Um... Uh, I got my Avatar Steelbooks, though. Oh, Andrew. I, I know the Cameron 4K. I'm genuinely are, worried if we get into this, Jamie, we'll okay, walk we out of yeah, the studio. No, right. anyway, anyway. I was like, wait, what? You don't, you don't need to know <laughs> okay, We're really big into physical media. That makes it sound worse. That makes us sound I'm like I'm trying perverts. to make us sound like historians. <laughs> Um, they re- he means Blu-ray discs. Okay. He just means fucking okay. discs. Okay. But discs. Steelbook is a specific type okay. of packaging, Look, which to me. gets back into the physical, tangible Jeez. aspect. Of it. Um, it comes up a lot. They've they've <laughs> re-released the Way of Water in an upgraded edition six months after it was released for the first time. Oh, okay. wow. Just for fucking simp's like us. Wow. So there's a boy who's sick, right? This is yes. sort of yes. propels the action of the middle of the movie. Right. So they, they're like, let's go find the medicine man. Because he's to basically get help. got like one tube of cancer juice left. And they're gonna use it to cure there's a tumor in his throat, they think. Yeah, yeah he has some like lumps. malignancy. Lumps right. in his right. throat. They, by the way, they call it lumps in his throat. I'm not just Yes. No, um, they they keep on being very kind of flippant about it, but she's like, you either save the rest of the world right, relieve like them of the greatest like plague of the 20th century. It's a trolley century. problem, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you get the the lumps out of one boy's That scene throat. was crazy because, yeah, he's like, I have to, yeah, I have to cure this boy. And then, and then she's like, no, you can't. And then she makes, she says, I can't believe it was like a line she had to say. She's like, he's not going to die in 48 hours. 
You remember that? Yes. She's like, she's going to die of cancer in 48 hours. I think you're like, also saying it in a, a nicer and more measured way than she says it, Jamie. Like, but she it was screams like this tone it. of like, he's fine. She says, this isn't a time sensitive yeah, issue. Yeah, this isn't time sensitive let cancer. Let the boy get this a little more break. cancer. Yeah, just let, him, let it grow a little more. Let the lumps take over just a little more. <laughs> let him suffer lumps. for like another two months. What's a lump? Look, he can take look, the cancer. Two lumps, look, three lumps, I'm, four I'm, lumps, five. <laughs> look. <laughs> they gotta go find the medicine man. Right. Connery has to like fake lose a fight with him, right? To sort of like right. oh, because this ingredient him over. This ingredient that you want is only at the 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 tallest trees. God, this is so stupid. Let's just oh this god, scene, let's just forget it. Let's I know. Not talk. As if it's like a Donkey <laughs> Kong country scene, level where you just have to what climb else is, as what high else you guys as up this to? felt the most when you told me it's Disney, I can't get that out of my head now. Yeah. This felt the most Disney yes. of him like fighting. The, the original medicine man and then she's like whispering like to the other like w- other aboriginal guy like what 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 are they saying right you know and then the and translation she, and then he's transla- and then but the translations aren't even funny they're like sincere and then she's like yelling like it's like she's watching a boxing absolutely. match absolutely and, and you're saying, like, like tell him his mother when yeah, she t- yeah tell him his mother sucks cock in hell or whatever right. the fuck she said she did say something that was like really weird about like fucking your cousin yeah when she goes round the block i mean she's so fat she goes around <laughs> the block like she's saying <laughs> fucking like street jokes for connery to yell at the medicine man I- I, but but and then the, and then the guy who's translating is being very sincere, like, oh, this is what they're saying. It was that was mind blowing. Anyways, I know we need the to move on. The setup of this sequence is Medicine Man reemerges with the stick. Yeah, and Lorraine Bracco's like, "What does this mean now?" And Connery is like, "You know when you get called in for a conference meeting, oh, and you, they make you shit down, and eat crow." Yeah. I also crow. weird, like Rosemary's Baby sort of throwback, where like. The, the medicine man, like, draws on her face in her sleep. Right, which she thinks is and a nightmare. And she thinks it's a nightmare, and then it's like, and then it's like, oh, but it actually happened, which is literally from Rosemary. I mean, also, I'm not saying they're a, taking it from that, but it felt very Rosemary's Baby when the devil tribal tattoo. Yeah, she's draws got a on big her blue... Yeah. She's uh, got a line across her forehead. Line on her forehead. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, and it is permanent. It's permanent. <laughs> um, it would have been the something blue at her wedding. So... <laughs> Uh, after this, the basically the medicine man is finally like the flowers have no juju. They cannot. That's right. You're wrong. The flowers, right? right. They cannot heal this boy. Yes. Uh, like that is not. You've misidentified the deal, and so Connery's like, we have to simply inoculate the boy. Like we, you know, sure. the, we, push has come to shove. But right? there's some little hint at the bugs. Yeah, being right. part of it. I don't right. remember exactly how he phrases it, but there's there's some kind of like little touch. That you then oh, oh, uh, the yeah, reveal. Here we go. No juju sky flower, only house for bugs. That's what the uh, mm. witch doctor, uh, you know, the medicine man says. He's like, sure. Th- the bugs live inside the flower. And of course, right. It's like, really, you should be grinding up these ants, I guess. Which we see the ants in that We're gonna, scene earlier. In the sugar you know, bowl. Shoot ant right. juice into you. Like that's Which, right, can I just I flag um, that this, the, that is the craziest shot to me of the whole movie is there's this weird thing where it's like all of the like, Native people are there and they're it's the women and they're topless and yeah. they pan across all of the boobs and then they get to Lorraine Bracos and she's in a shirt. Yes. And it just stops there. Almost like that's the punchline is that like, oh, they don't wear shirts right. like she does. Out. Right. And it was so, it was such a crazy show. I was like, that's I can't thing. even there believe that. Sort of, yes, this is incidental a, sort of National Geographic I was kind say, of nudity. This is a PG-13 right. movie with a lot of like photojournalism nudity. Right. And then there's this one shot that like calls attention to it. In a completely in the name of like a punchline that doesn't really work. Uh, exactly. Am I yeah. said? Am I being clear about yes, what it is? Yes. Okay. But it's truly it is it is like a slow like dolly track a shot. a dolly track shot across, across nipples just breasts close yeah. up close, close up. up close up the framing is right on the tits. pair of tits pair of tits pair, pair of tits, tits pair of tits Lorraine Bracco Lorraine in a tank Bracco top. in a shirt yeah can you believe this lady. I couldn't. I couldn't believe they kept that in. Right, and then she almost yells at the cameraman. Hey, my th- eyes are up here. <laughs> <laughs> 
We have to we have to do Scorsese now just to clear her good name. I, I, David, I was <laughs> going to say that we almost have a moral obligation. It is too rude if we cover Pinocchio, Medicine Man, and don't do a Goodfellas episode. Like we just have to actually shout her out in a movie that's good because uh, yeah. we're really. We're, I mean, what what am I supposed to do? Who beats her for the Goodfellas Oscar? Um, fuck. Uh, it's not Mary McDonnell. No. Um, who that's wins the Goodfellas Oscar? So that, but that's the dance. It's of not rules. Mercedes Rule, is it? <sighs> Maybe that's, in my opinion, an overrated performance. I agree um, with you. It's Mercedes. No, it's no, it's Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg in Ghost, Goldberg. which was the fucking juggernaut. Like, it's hard to. You're not you losing. To, no, oh no. yeah, no. Because Whoopi had the combo of yep. this movie is huge and she pops and it's so crazy. Yes, and she probably should have already won an Oscar Correct. for Color Purple. Right. So it's like. You know, it was every, her, it stand was aside, time. everybody. Yeah. yeah, like Whoopi's getting this one. Yes, she Such also a great performance. That year is Whoopi, Annette Benning for The Grifters, which is also a performance that probably could have won in a different year. Mm. Mary McDonald dances with wolves. Diane Ladd, Wild at Heart. That's like a crazy good category. Uh, it's a very good category, and those are basically five great performances. Wait, Wild at Heart. What is that? The That's David, David Lynch, Lynch movie. Uh, Nicholas with, Cage, where Diane Ladd is Elvis playing. Coded. Um, oh, Diane yeah, Ladd, yeah, who is yeah. who is Laura Dern's mom, is right. playing Laura Dern's mom. Okay, uh, and she's crazy, and it's a big crazy See, performance. Like, here's the thing: I'm like, oh right, my timeline was wrong. My cousin Vinny is two years after that. So yeah, like, so Tomei's, Tomei's like an ingenue not... only at this yeah. point. Yeah, right. And then Perez and Fearless is ninety three. This is the same year as White Men Can Jump. So you're like, little, she wouldn't really have had early. right Stone. This is the same year as Basic Instinct. But I did no. There's the group of people we were talking Look, about: if you're Pfeiffer talking and Sigourney and '80s. Yeah, I mean Holly Hunter. Oh, mm. post broadcast news. I mean, could she do a Bronx accent? No, no. They would no, just say she's, would be, she's, uh, she's Georgia, Georgia Peach. Peach. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Candace Bergen. Oh, I guys, mean Bergen guys. getting buckets in the Amazon. What about Cher? Just. Hey, just call her up. I would love that. That would be fun, right? That'd be so fun. Yeah. Come on. I mean, yeah. that's a that's a powerhouse. Cher could also hold Cher court. and Connery. Yeah, yes, exactly. Against yeah. Connery, right? Or Sonny. Right. They both won Oscars Sonny. in the same year. Okay, or Sonny. Now, now Ben's raising an interesting point. What if Not this movie <laughs> is fifteen years after their divorce? Sonny and Cher together in the Amazon, <laughs> trying to cure cancer. Isn't he like a congressman by this point? Yep. Yeah, he's a congressman. He could take a like, break. I resign from Congress. I have received a script. So profound. This thing's so good, and I'm told Stoppard's about to take a hack. Four at million it. have already been <laughs> sunk into this. <laughs> I have an obligation to my constituents. Fucking Sonny, man. Sonny. He's like a Republican, too. And then he died of a skiing accident. I know. Yeah. yeah. That part's sad. Yeah. Um, it's just funny that you're like, oh, Sonny and Cher are these like bohemian TV, you know, yeah. icons. And then you're like, oh, you look it up, it's like, yeah, he's always sort of like a Reagan Republican. <laughs> right, like, oh, right, Fiscal right. conservative. Yeah, right. <laughs> look, they go back to the fucking village. They figure out that it's ants. Um, <laughs> because they she, get... she whips up a new batch and suddenly the numbers, the cancer's down to 22. Don't you even try to justify how they explain this shit. Like, what sugar did you use? <laughs> and she's like, we ran out, so I went over to the coffee station. And he knocks over <laughs> dramatically the sugar bowl and a bunch of ants come out. And his eyes widen. Right. So she doesn't even figure this out no. through ingenuity. Absolute right. It's not like she uses her right. That's her, right. Her, her biochemistry that's, wiles. Yes, exactly. And, and arguably, not only is it an accident, but it's because she was being unprofessional. Right. Like the implication is almost like they were supposed to go into the jungle for more organic cane sugar. And instead, she just took a spoonful of I domino took off some the sweet counter. Sweet with my bra. But right. also, they do in the beginning set up that she's like very smart. She like understands this computer database more than he does. Yes, like she's better so at computer. Why, she's a modern like, woman, especially with all the rewrites they did. Why wouldn't you follow through? Like, why, why would you have her do anything? Why are you pulling yes. a different thread now? Where it's like she's kind of like a doofus who just like stumbles upon. You know what yes, I mean? It's like, like you've set her up that she's good. And what also, does she... sort of has this energy of like, oh fuck, I'm getting caught for fucking up the formula. When he's like, "What sugar did you use?" She's like, "Uh." Oh my god! But what does she do in this movie? I, like, I guess she helps him get over his wife leaving him. Like, like yeah. what does she do? Like. 
I, if I'm just fucking Robert question. McKee or whatever, looking, I'm like, what? What is this character's you know effect on this story apart right. from right. yelling in his goddamn ear? Right. Also, what is he? Well, he's do trying for to drown her? himself. Nothing. Let's, I don't know. Let's talk about that. Well, I guess what? breaks off her engagement. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. There's right. that yeah. kind of funny thing where he's like, "Who's your fiance?" And she's like, "Oh, it's this guy." And he's like, "He's 80 years old. You're gonna inherit. Brilliant. Like, great idea. I know right. that guy." And she's like, "No, his son." And he's like, "Oh, well, I don't know that guy." Right. Like, that's the, you know. Which is the first time she even invokes the fiance, which is over an hour into the movie, which she brings up because all the tribes people are looking at her weird. That's right. And she's like, why? And he's like, they can't believe you're the oldest virgin they've ever seen. That was such a crazy line. What are you talking about? Well, I had to give them some reason they couldn't sleep with you. And she's like, well, you could tell them I'm engaged. And then they bring up this boyfriend for one fucking scene. They bring up the fiance. You know, writing a letter to him or anything. I know. And then he is. Because I can't even imagine that relationship and then he is not no you can't imagine I, I, I it's can't funny imagine oh, I, her having a it's fiance. funny to cast the idea of the fiance of like is she going home to bill pullman right she's marrying like a medical nepo baby I, right. I guess is the joke right? right if if he knows her dad yes uh i forgot i was about to say she's not writing him letters but obviously i forgot she actually just screams to him from the jungle <laughs> and it echoes off a satellite and hits him in fucking Houston or wherever the hell he is. That's what they did before text messaging. Yeah, exactly. She would just Braco scream. Braco would just, <laughs> like, like emanating sonic waves. Yeah. Like Banshee. This movie like doesn't even bother to be like, oh, she really did love him, but now she's finding a new version of herself here. No, he doesn't here. exist. He's no. not real. Again, they're off also, camera, all the important things happen off camera. They're also not coding it as like, oh, she's in this engagement of convenience, but this guy doesn't really excite her. It's just like, she just casually mentions she has a fiance and who what? is not brought up again until the final scene where Connery derisively is like, what are you going to do? Go back to him? Toss that fucker. And our, <laughs> our, our understanding of this fiance, they don't, they don't even make a choice choice about how we're supposed to feel about him when they introduce him because uh whatever connery makes that stupid virgin joke and then and then he's like why aren't you married yet or whatever and then i right. hate long engagements yeah, yeah 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 and she's like oh we're not married yet we were gonna get married last year and then <laughs> and then you're like okay so like you guys are just kind of like not getting married quickly i mean like that doesn't right. mean that you don't love each other like no. it's such a okay. it's not a choice it's not you're not saying the thing like just be clear. Like No, and the only other time I think he's even mentioned is when she's like falling asleep and Connery makes a comment about one of her earlobes being longer than the other and then says like, I, I bet your fiancé, Mr. Hooper, never noticed that. That's the thing you kind of thing you only notice when you're in love. Like, he just kind of quietly, like, <laughs> mutters to himself the realization that he likes her even though he has shown no, no real they, interest or attraction. No, exactly, exactly. And it's, like, it's just so murky. I'm, like, like in the scene where it, where where she says the thing, or he says the thing about the long engagement, like, why couldn't that be a little, like, like more spelled out where she's like, Set I don't up. know, I, there's something, whole, like, even if she said bad pitch, like, I don't know. I asked myself that. Yes. Like something where you're like, oh, she has doubts. Like I didn't even know she had doubts off of. So it seems like she's like engaged. At least give me the one sentence of trying to instill any sense of unease she has That's about right. her engagement. That's right. Just Rather than just like, you. I haven't gotten around to it. And yes. then also just the easiest fix in the world to have her be the one who consciously cracks that it's the bugs. Yep. Like just That's right. th the flip of the exact moment where Connery's at the computer and she's like, wait, the data is different. Where did you pull the sugar from? Oh my God, it has to be like, let her solve that. I my know. number one note for this movie is when they were done with the edit and all that, they should have oh. taken it and put it in the garbage. But my number two <laughs> note is what if we just began with twin scenes? Uh -huh. Her with her, you know, boring napkin husband, yeah. uh, fiance, whatever, being like, I gotta go to... Phone call. You want me to fly to where? <laughs> and like... I gotta get on a boat? You know, yeah. he's like, oh, you're gonna love it. And she's like, oh my goodness. And like, they have like a bad kiss. Right. And you're like, I don't do And that. he's like, and when we get back, you're gonna retire from your job and right. stay home. That's right. right. I, I, about, I gotta right? talk to my mom about the linens, whatever. Right. Where we're like, okay, she's kind of fleeing something. Sure. And then we cut to Connery you know, under a waterfall while his wife's like, I'm going, I've had enough. <laughs> yes. Like, so yes. we get at least why he's, you know, in such a low place, right? right? She's like, I'm dating your assistant. <laughs> We're moving to fucking Peru. I'm out of here. Yes. Like, 
just instead of just her showing up and him being like, what the fuck's your mask? You know, and like immediately just in their conflict. Yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to fix a movie that, you know, fundamentally just needs to be forgotten. I agree. I mean, I think it's like the thing where like, I don't know, I feel like everyone's always trying to be like clever with exposition and it's like, I mean, well, not this movie because it's so much exposition. Everything is just being said. There's no like show, don't tell. Um, But I also think like there's power in just saying what you're trying to convey. Like there's no need to be coy. Like just spell it out. Like what are we watching? I think this is more a modern epidemic. It's like sort of surprising that Medicine Man doesn't have this shit because this feels like the peak of like 90s Hollywood script notes, biggest emotional arcs hit the obvious beats, like, sometimes to the detriment of films, where it's like, you have to do all of this. Of course. Like, this feels like the kind of movie they're making in The Player, right? This feels like the kind of movie you're listening to Tim Robbins. But you you, you can't... Yeah, yes, I I agree. It feels like you're overhearing dialogue, like, in an editing bay, and people are like, oh, Jesus Christ, this piece of shit. But, like, where they would demand, like, she needs to have, it needs to be a a fiancé with a running nose in the first act who's, like, a wet blanket or whatever You almost want that, like, like Sleepless in Seattle kind of. I know, but that's that's also because the the, the genre is so unclear what they're trying to make. But this is the thing I I feel like Like, I complain about. Wikipedia calls this an adventure drama. I mean, kind of. I guess so. Like, that's probably the closest. Wow. But, like, to, to earn both of those titles, you have to add six more. Right. Right? To say, that's like, right. that makes it sound like it's 50% adventure, 50% drama. And you're right. like, it's 10% 10 things. It's, yeah. 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 Sure. The, the adventure sequence, yeah, I wish it was so much more adventure. Like you had said before, I feel like I wanted it to be, like, we have to get to the thing. Right. And then it's them you know, on an adventure to go get the thing. Like, I wish there was, I wish that was the art. I wish that was the setup of the movie. A big recurring complaint of mine to sort of like what you're getting at is I think this is kind of a pox in a lot of modern filmmaking. Yeah. Is you have like development execs who don't really have any like background or love in like the idea of storytelling. Yeah. Or coming from like tech or business sides. And they're, like, approaching things with this sort of, like, cynical attitude of audiences know all the cliches. You can't do these things that people are going to make fun of because they've seen them in a billion movies. And to your point of, like, it doesn't even need to be artful, I see so many movies now where I'm like, you're missing the one line to set this up. That's right. And if you did it gracefully, I would give you a fucking standing ovation. But also because you don't have the one scene where someone says, well... I don't really like my boyfriend. The movie doesn't work. And you think you're like avoiding the quote unquote cringe moment by not doing the version of the scene we've seen a thousand times. And you're like, maybe the reason that existed for decades is because it works, because it's functional. Or if at the very least, if you're not going to put the line in, direct her to be like, we need you to like show some reservation about your relationship, so which right. she did Way not to do. communicate. It. She was just like, yeah, I don't know. We might, get, you know, it was just like, oh, all right. Like, I don't think. I guess also maybe that's part of that is dated. Maybe back then, you know, if you had a long engagement, it meant something different. Whereas now, plenty of people do it for financial think, reasons or just being again, busy, whatever no, it is. His busy, response yeah. to it is just like. Oh, I hate long engagement. I know. He's not even like, long engagement, bad sign. Like, his right. judgment of it has nothing to do with her. He just her. seems like a grumpy old man. It's in principle. Totally. And then she's just defensive where she's like, I don't know, fuck off. Right. There's, <laughs> no, <laughs> there's no real conversation. They're, they're like having separate conversations. Yes. And also in that scene, he does not seem jealous of the idea that she has. Not at all. A significant other. He's like, good on you getting that bag. Marry this fucking old guy. Yeah, right. you're like, oh, he's like just kind of being supportive grandpa right yeah. now. Like, I don't understand. Yeah. Um, let's just wrap up. Yeah. By saying that a uh, bulldozer does catch fire and burn down the village to sort of end the film. Correct. There's also a scene where it's... Lorraine Bracco goes through his journals in which he has done. I would say quite good drawings yeah. of people dying. Yeah. It's his diary of the of the, the swine flu he right, caused. Right, the past epidemic, yes. And it's just pages of him doing very good 
portrait wow. of people in various states of illness. Yes. And you're like, what, what a weird way for him to document this rather you than could just, just like, write the like the name and the date. Right. But instead, it's literally like he's t- taking headshots of all of them. It's it's like an odd romanticism of him drawing mothers crying over dead yep. children's bodies. Yep. So that when the tractor comes through and sets fire to the village, she also the next morning in the wreckage finds the burnt scraps of his drawings and is like, oh, it happened again. I let it happen again. Then she finds Connery kind of passed out, but oh, alive and well. Yeah. Uh, he, you think he's going to be dead or something, but right. he's fine. The guy who uh, dropped it's the kind of his fault. Assistant it comes, yes, and is like, "Hey," and he's like, "About time you're here." Right. We heard the great yeah. news about the cure for cancer. We want to sell it. <laughs> he's like, and, "It's fucking ants." Right. And Connery's like, "You fucked it all up." And they're like, "What are you talking about? The medicine man saved them." Right. And she was like, "The medicine man, Sean Connery." He's like, "No, this guy." And then, oh, the reveal, the medicine man finally came back to save his people. He returned to the tribe. He found them a new apartment to move into. <laughs> Basically, they're just like, don't worry. He says there's another jungle and it's going to be fine. Yeah, right. They're just, just going to move. Just over yon, Right next door and the road will never hit them. All of that is good. You know, need to feel he... no colonial, a colonialist <laughs> guilt. Everyone is fine. He gives Connery a golf club, which is yes, like his stick. You know, here you go. Brocco negotiates like a better contract for him. And she gets to be the co-discoverer right. of the cure for cancer. And then there's this like incredibly forced bogey and bacall style. What do you want? I want co-authorship on the cure. And then she's like, What do you want? And he goes, a bath and a meal. Oh, we have God. to take that shirt off. She walks over to him unbuttons. He's got a cigarette in his mouth. She pulls out close up of her breaking the cigarette in her hand. She starts to lean in and we're like, God damn it, I'm going to have to watch them kiss now. Goes into slow motion, cuts away right before I'm their lips I'm wincing hit. even you describing the two of them. And ho- then like, you can basically hear them. Michael Eisner being like, cut the picture, go to black. And then the movie. <laughs> I don't want to see this. Only in its last 90 seconds deploys the one thing this film was clearly missing. Voiceover from Lorraine Bracco. You're like, so... Ex-fiance, I bet you're wondering what happened to me. It's been a wild two years in the jungle. A lot of things have changed. They pan up. She's got this kind of like wardrobe now. She looks like she oh works God. at a uh, fair trade uh, co-op coffee shop in Green Sure, Point. of course. Is that fair to say? Yeah, sure. She's got like one braid in her hair. Oh, my she's God. She's got like this sort of oversized aviator glasses. Yeah. And then she's kept the tattoo. And then she's got this sort of patchwork, like half her previous sort of like sense of fashion. Half now she has become a tribal leader. And her and Connery are marching them through the jungle. She's walking. She's standing on top of a rock with her own walking stick. Okay. And and just offhandedly mentions that they're married. Right. Sure. And, and that's the end of the movie in this narration. This film got poor reviews, Griffin. Interesting. Um, people said that it was somewhat miscast. Mm. Uh, and uh, Owen Gleiberman said, it's not every day you get to see a performance as bad as Lorraine Bracco's in Medicine Man. Not um, wrong. Ro- Roger Ebert said, I, I just think this said is she seemed to be acting in a high school play. Wow. <laughs> but okay. he also said, all the elements are here for a movie I would probably enjoy very much, but somehow they never come together. If this had been some dumb adventure movie, it probably would have been terrific. Yes. That's the kind of point I feel like Ebert was so good at making, where he's like, this movie's a little too good to be fun without actually being good. Wow. Um, the yeah. shittier version of this is actually better. It that w- is exactly right. It was a flop, but it did make 44 million American dollars. Absurd. So that's money that, a, a, you know, grown-up drama would love to make now, I would, would say. Would be thrilled. Um, but basically, it's its budget. So, you know, uh-huh. it wasn't like a hit. No. Um, it opened, Griffin, on February 7th, 1992. Okay. So mm-hmm. Valentine's Day approaching. Mm. Uh, to eight point four million dollars, number one at the box office. America chose the Medicine Man. Wow! I mean, Connery was just he, powerful. He was going to open a picture no matter what. Number two uh, is a thriller. Okay, a a big hit hmm. of the early. Hand the rocks to cradle. Wow, I had a feeling. Yeah, the hand that rocks. Have you seen the hand that rocks the cradle? The babysitter from hell movie. Yeah, uh, starring Rebecca De Mornay. I don't know. 
ever saw it. Well, it feels like one of those ones that I probably saw, but I, yeah, I don't know. It's basically a movie that gets like unofficially remade every seven years. Okay. Right. Okay. Like, what the if, name is so famous. Yes. I mean, there's so many post fatal attraction movies of which this is one, right? Maybe where that's it's why like, I'm kind of like conflating. What them. if a woman entered your life, a mysterious right. hot ingenue right. who you hired as a babysitter or you got as a roommate or you right. like moved in female, next door to? Hand the Rocks the Critical. And it turned out yeah. her entire purpose in life was to fuck and kill you. <laughs> It's true. Yeah. And this one's Rebecca de Mornay wants to take out Annabella Shore and like some fucking guy. I don't even know who the guy is in that movie. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, uh, to Curtis Hansen movie. So we could do it one day. We could do it. Yeah. I feel like it's the best of the top a type of movie. I think we're single talking. white female is the best. Oh, you're right. Of that, those, I love that movie. Those movies. Because single white female is unhinged. Yes. Um number we, three at the box office. Griffin. Okay. Number three at the box office. Is new this week. You're never going to get this. Hmm. I feel like free the to challenge. Guess Jamie, obviously. Uh, an erotic thriller mm-hmm. from Phil Juno. Oh. Director Phil Juno, probably best known for making YouTube music videos. Fuck. No, but I, th- I think this came up in the, the box office game it's website maybe come up recently. Before. It's maybe come up before. Um, uh, fuck. Can you, get, can you give me um, the stars? Richard Gere? It's Primal's, not Red Corner? Primal Fear? No. No. Great, great guess. No. Kim Basinger is the, yeah. the female yep. lead uh-huh. here. Yep. You've this also got up. Uma Thurman. Hmm. Uh-huh. And you've got a guy who never appears in thrillers. So this is a real swerve for him. Eric Roberts. <laughs> wow. Also, Keith David and Paul Guilfoyle. I don't know. This sounds pretty good. Um, this yeah, movie is it's called... uh, about a psychiatrist treating someone for yep. OCD. I know, and I then he it. uncovers. So it's like a psychiatrist oh. title. Psychiatry. You know, sort of is what the title is playing yeah. off of. Uh, on, a, on the poster, I want to. They're kissing. There's a weird kissing real good. thing, Jamie, where I like always struggle with 80s, 90s Richard Gere titles outside of like the four big ones. I do that. Yeah, they all kind of blend together a little right. bit for me. It's like, right, Primal Fear, Love Pretty Woman. Movie. Like there's like the one right. example in each of his modes that I know. And a lot of these feel totally lost in time. This movie is called. It's not called No Good Deed, but it's it like a it's really a psychiatric title. term. Yes. Oh no, it does it does have a It's a boring title, but it's a psychiatric sort of title. The film is called Full on Ape Shit. Final Analysis. Oh boy. Oh uh, pretty yeah, dull title. I hate it is. that title. But what's the tagline? You oh, seemed excited by the tagline. Oh no, I didn't. Oh no, they were just oh. kissing. Uh, what is okay, the tagline? You're just excited they're kissing on the poster. They're kissing on the poster. Okay. A psych here's the tagline. Jesus. A psychiatrist and two beautiful sisters playing. The ultimate mind game. Someone was seduced, someone was set up, and before it was over, dot, 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 someone was dead. Mm. Okay. Uh, and then there's a second tagline. You want to hear it? Yeah, please. Hot-blooded passion, cold-blooded murder. Okay. Uh, okay. Uma Thurman is the other sister. Gotcha. Um, number four at the box office. It's a, 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 what they call back in the 90s, a chick flick. One of the best. Uh, a sort of a, a paramount example of the chick flick. It's not a uh, is it is it a generational ensemble movie? You bet. Is it Fried Green Tomatoes? That's right. Okay. Do you like Fried Green Tomatoes? The food. I did like it. Yeah, I remember it being kind of sad. It's a little sad. Yeah. Are you know, supposed to cry at the end? It's my godmother's favorite movie. When I was younger, movie. though, I didn't like movies that made me cry. I was like, this is yeah. a bad feeling. Why would I pay to? Did do you this? like horror movies? Yes, always. Interesting. So you don't you don't mind being scared? No, I don't mind being don't scared. Cry. I don't. I don't like. I hated ET. I. I really. Yeah. Okay, I too much. hate anything that like yeah. made me really sad. I was just like, ugh. Like I never want to watch that again ever. I thought it was like the equivalent of seeing something really gory on screen. Right. You're it was, like you emotionally don't care about gory. That. Like heads e. are flying. I love, like, but the parent gets killed off at the beginning of a Disney movie thing. I, I was just like, this should be illegal. Right. I like know. any any Disney cartoon where like, you know, a, someone right. a car crashes. We've or, definitely like, talked about this, but my mom was like, you want to go see Lion King? And I was like, the dad dies. What are you talking I'm not gonna go see what are you that. Sick right. woman. Yeah. What you want to take me to a snuff film? <laughs> <laughs> like I had heard, like oh, and Mufasa dying is so sad. I'm like, yeah, Ugh. get ready for me to never watch. Yeah, that. I don't want to watch that. Number five, um, just one of those fucking movies that doesn't exist. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, I'm swearing so much. And Medicine Man's angry up my blood. Um, oh God, I swore so much. Am I not supposed to? Uh, no, 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 no. swear as much as you okay, like. Okay. Uh, he's got a total podcast. Mouth. Um, World War II drama. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, big star. World War II. Total mm-hmm. bomb. World War II, big star, big bomb. Based on a book. You're never going to get this. Is it based? I'm never going to get no, this? I'm, no, you're not. Fuck you're just not going to get you. this one. You're I not. I think I can. <laughs> I don't think so. Like an A-lister? Yeah, he's an A-lister. He is. I mean, this is like one of his forgotten movies in between a bunch of hits. He's very hot in like the late 80s and early 90s. He's, he's very, still alive. He's still alive. Is he still working? Yeah, but he's pretty old. But he's still working. I mean, he was in a hit uh, a hit Marvel movie this year. He was in a hit Marvel movie. I put hit in quotes because it wasn't really a hit, but compared to like the Marvels, it was, you know, a sensation. Is he in Quantumania? Or... Yeah. Uh, so it's a Douglas movie? Michael Douglas. And it's World War Two. Yeah, but I don't think that's helpful. And it's based on a book. Because it's like a romantic drama, I think. Oh. Yeah. Who directed it? David Seltzer. Yeah, I'm never going to get that. Aha, you admit it. Yeah. It's called Shining Through. I have not heard of it. Michael Douglas, Melanie Griffith, it. Liam Neeson. Yeah, I have never heard of that. Okay, well, I haven't either. Okay. And it didn't do well. Does Douglas play like an American soldier? You want me to read the synopsis of this I, fucking I kind thing of now? I do, because I want to picture Douglas doing it. I'm here trying to stop it, the Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he plays a humorless attorney. Okay. <laughs> uh, who is, I guess, a spy in Germany. That sounds kind of good. Yeah. I don't know. Well, it's about the two of them being spies in Germany during World War II. I'm sure you have this as well, but you fall into this trap. You find a movie like this on Wikipedia and you're like, holy shit. This, this must fuck be it, good. This must be good. And you're watching and you're like, this is why no one has oh, ever right, talked about it. Right, it's right. a bomb for a reason. It's just right. nothing. Yeah. yeah. When you hear a synopsis, you're like, it could be good. It could like be a good. synopsis of synopsis anything. I'm like, stars. Oh, maybe. Medicine Man isn't that, though. Medicine Man, you hear the elements and yeah, you're, you're like, like, I don't that, need that to see that. That doesn't sound like it's going to work. Right. <laughs> that sounds like a mistake. Um, you Other movies at the box office, honestly, a fun time. Steve Martin's Father of the Bride. Sure. Slam dunk. Aww, Total fun movie. Love that movie. Uh, Beauty and the Beast. Heard P- of it? Pretty big. Yeah. Big movie. JFK. Yeah. Heard pretty of big. it? Yeah. Uh, the film Grand Canyon, not as big a hit, I sure. would say. The Larry Kasdan movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, also Steve Martin. Steve Martin's fucking and, uh, running the table. Hook. Steven Spielberg's Hook. Is wow. that? Are these all holdovers yeah, from? they've all been right. out for like two to three months. Okay. They're just kind of swimming around. But yeah, wild there. time. Wow. Uh, and number 11 of the box office is 35 Up, Griffin, is the, uh, the fifth, yeah, fourth or fifth numbers. of the... Uh, the ongoing documentary said, series. Is someone picking it up now? That I assume someone started? will. Do yeah. you know what these are? The no. Up movies. So it's like a documentary was made in the 60s to like chronicle British children called Seven Up. Oh, Where yeah. they interview children from like all walks of life in Britain. And then every seven years they check they, in with Yes, them. yes, 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 yes. I remember And this. they released 63 Up in 2019. So and I guess the that means died. the director has died. But he didn't direct the first one. So, you know, someone else could take right. it. Right. Right. Um, like you know, they, it was it was a group project. Sure, sure. So seventy up would be due in twenty twenty six. So hopefully someone's fucking working. I on hope that. so. I, yeah. I bet they are. I feel like they got to keep that going. It's just such a valuable franchise. Yeah, to let that <laughs> yeah. die. That on the kind vine. of IP is just you know crucial. If Disney acquires the ups, look, we know Marvel. And Star Wars have been faltering for us a little bit, so we need to make a big ticket. Well, purchase. look, Disney owns Medicine Man, and I'm told Lorraine Bracco's character will be uh, replacing Kang. Of course. As the new big She's bad. She's the new big bad for the right. next phase of the MCU. <laughs> you fucking Avengers! I want to see her as a, or, or hear her as a seagull, as the angry seagull. I, th- I right. contend she is good in that movie. Yeah, it, She's, sounds, it sounds like a good role for her. It's good casting. Yeah. Yes. And that movie is such a nightmare that is when it? she shows up, it has a little energy. Wait, is that the one that, didn't that like get nominated for things? No, that's Guillermo del Toro. the Guillermo del Toro that's right, one that's, that's like about right. fascism and yes, it's interesting. It's loaded with ideas and is nice to look at. Right, and, and the an Zemeckis Oscar. one is like, what if we did like a CG version of the Disney movie that looked like garbage yes. and like Tom Hanks is like in a bed asleep with his eyes fully closed and we pay him $20 million is he, who that. does he, Geppetto. Geppetto. Oh, he plays Geppetto? And he's like, oh, Pinocchio, oh, I'll see you later. So oh, it's a TD so... bank and my routing number is this. And you know, like... It's live action, but it's 90% CGI goop. Oh, that's so uncomfortable. Uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt plays Jiminy Cricket, a role I read for. Oh, 
that seems like that would be a fun role. I feel like, but <laughs> I think it would be fun to do. Yeah, I will say it's not fun to watch what he did. Oh wow, I can't even Jimmy imagine. Jimmy Cricket him. sucks. I, I mean, he's you want a funny one. But he's I, just the one who shows up and is like, Pinocchio, oh, stop true. being he's naughty. Folksy. He's folksy. Yeah. yeah, he's got a little hat. Yeah. In the original Italian book, the cricket goes up and is like, stop lying to your father. And Pinocchio kills him. Right. And then he is not in the rest of the book. Yes. Pinocchio's like, shut up, bug. Smash. I'm out of here. <laughs> I, I haven't seen like the original or like the older Disney Pinocchio in a long time, but I always imagine Pin- uh, uh Geppetto being like uh, the seagull in The Little Mermaid, but he's not, you're saying. I always thought he was like kind of the kindly grandfather. Okay, okay. I thought he was like the fun, kooky sidekick. The seagull in Little Mermaid is essentially just like trying to get Ariel laid. Like, I love Scuttle because he's basically like, I found you another hottie on this boat. Let's go. That's kind of the role that Bracco's filling that (laughs) they add to Pinocchio. Okay, okay, got it. Jiminy Cricket's like his like folksy, like conscious. And then Geppetto just looks like an older version of the man on the pizza box who just mostly lies awake in bed and goes, oh, no, my boy. Where did Pinocchio go? Because for most of the movie, Pinocchio's on his journey and he's like, I was a bad father. And they, there's so much imagery in movies, like thinking of like Wonka with like there, there's just a lot of imagery of like like older, like parental figures just in bed. Yes. <laughs> there's I mean, so much of that. There used to be it, it feels doll, like, like culturally, when people turned 30, they, they, they just, would go gray, they lie go in gray bed, and they go, they've done with a terminal case of being old. Yes, yeah, they're that's weary right. bones. That's yes. right. Because that's the thing. Charlie Bucket is, what, like seven years old? Sure. Or how old, how old is he supposed to be? Yeah, something ten. like seven, ten. Like, so his grandparents probably aren't even that no, old. they're like no. in their sixties. Because this is like post They might be our age. They, they honestly. honestly might be younger. It's like yeah. a Simpsons thing where it's like, yeah, Homer's 37 his or whatever. parents might be 18. <laughs> oh, yeah, the parents. I was thinking of Grandpa Joe. No, but, I'm like, yeah, no, no, but that's, jo- yeah, he's Grandpa got Grandpa Joe's probably like, yeah, 42. Yes. 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 He's probably like, you know, doing Zooms from his bed. For if, sure. In the modern. Yeah, honestly, like, he's in his prime. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's on field. He's trying to like yeah. you know get something started. He's like I I'm in a four person bed situation. I already wants sleep to... with three other people every night. <laughs> if anyone wants to join, I don't get out of bed for anything less than a golden ticket. Right. But if you got one of those, I will get up I, and dance. I, yeah, I abs- my these legs work, baby. David, they you work. got a, you got a it's solid for... chunk on Grandpa Joe. You really do. <laughs> I read those books so many times as a yeah. kid, and I, they really, when you're a kid, you're just like, I get it, the grandparents sleep in a big bed. Like, I have no questions. Sure. Like, that's what the magic of the doll books is, is you totally buy into you whatever do. weird whatever scenario. Whatever world they set up, you're yes. like, okay. And then you can Thank ponder you it endlessly me. as an adult being that's like, right. what the fuck was that? Like, that's crazy. I think over the span of five years... SNL did two different sketches that were riffing on how weird it is that the grandparents all sleep in the bed together. And they were not treated as like, oh, it's a recurring sketch now. It's just someone else is like, wait a minute. Yes. (laughs) Isn't it also the configuration of how they're in the bed? Like, aren't two people against the headboard and then, like, the others are on the other side? It's head to toe, head head to toe, toe, head to toe. 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 Yeah. And it's two beds put together. Right, right. Is Right. Is that it? I think... Yeah, it probably is. Well, but it's sort of part of the idea is like they're in this multi generation house with like one bed, right? Yes. Like I don't even know where the buckets sleep. I don't know how they made Charlie. Like not to be. <laughs> they got crass. on top of the grandparents <laughs> over the covers. Oh boy, uh, we got to be done. Yeah, with that, let's yeah. wrap up. Jamie, thank you so much for doing. Oh, this. thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for coming. This, uh, was, a, this was a real Sorry treat. We made this, you movie. Watch this movie. No, I thought it was. It was really fun to talk about it. Okay, good. It's sort of the intern of its of its time. Right? It is. Oh yeah, the intern. I know. I was yeah. thinking. I was like, what was the movie that we covered? I intern's yeah. good. One intern my, is one of my way better than this movie. Yeah, yeah. intern oh, movie. I yeah, love. for sure. Yeah. Uh, All right, anything? I got a pain. Okay. But oh, no, no, no. Jamie's got a pain. you need to plug. Oh, you could do, no, just plug. you can follow me on Instagram at really Jamie Lee. And yeah, more to, more to come. You are you going on tour? I have some or? dates. You yeah, have a yeah. New and they're hour you've been yes, working. Yes, yes. Right? And yeah. they're all like all my dates are listed on um there's a link on my Instagram. You're uh, one of the best out yes, there. Yes, truly. That's so such nice a fan guys. of your work Thank always. You. Um I, I regretted missing you. You were uh, working through it. Yes, but I'm, I think I'm going to do it again. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I'd love yeah. To I did an yeah. hour at Union Hall, and I think yes. I'm going to. Uh, it was really fun and productive, so I'm going to do it again. Amazing. 
Uh, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, of course. And thank you all for listening. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe. David is running to the bathroom. Thank you to Marie Barty, our associate producer on the show. Thank you to Joe Bowen and Pat Rounds for our artwork. J.J. Birch for our research. This one, I think, took some real digging to get any quotes on Medicine Man. Uh, AJ McKeon, Alex Barron for our editing. Leigh Montgomery, The Great American Novel for a theme song. You can go to blankcheckpod.com for links to some real nerdy shit, including Blank Check special features, our Patreon where we do commentaries on film series. We're still in Terminators at this point, I think. Um, but we're also going to be doing Die Hard 2 over there to fill in the gap of the one non-McTiernan Die Hard in that original trilogy. We are, yes, we are still in Terminator land. And, um, just about a week ago, we will have covered Die Hard 2. So that, that is a thing I, I direct you towards. Ben and I just kind of staring each other down now. David's flushing the toilet. Jamie's putting her coat on. <laughs> Tune in next week for... Well, the good thing is McTiernan rebounded with a very simple, easy production, a movie that landed to universal acceptance. Last action hero. A movie that is basically like the too big to fail moment for like 90s studio filmmaking. He really has his peaks and valleys. It's true. Yes. <sighs> Dick is out. Tune in for that. Dick is out. And as always, pop, pop, fish, fish. I thought you said dick is out. No. He said take us out. He said. <sighs>